everyone. Welcome to my channel. Here on the Shunapreneur channel, I share information about government contracting, veteran business content, and other business tips. What's going on, everyone? It is Sheena, aka Sheena Panua, your favorite veteran. And today, 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 look, y'all asked, y'all asked me, and look, we can't, we we got them here. We got day here. This is like once in a lifetime opportunity because I guarantee he's gonna be gone, and I'm not gonna be able to get him back on this call. So day is here, and a lot of you all have already hit me up like, oh my goodness, this is gonna be so dope. It's gonna be so amazing. Very, very impressive young man. And I want him to go ahead and just tell us who he is for those who don't know and what he does and how old he is. Because I heard that he's like, I didn't even ask. I didn't even ask. I know he's young, but I heard he's like super young and he's the man in charge. So go ahead and tell us who you are. What's going on, everybody? My name is Day Cantave, just like day of the week. Uh, it's only three letters. You can't mess it up. Um, so I'm the senior government buyer at Two Lines Aerospace, which is, um, it was a startup. Now, uh, it's my family's company, and we're this this year we'll probably do somewhere around 20 mil um, in revenue. And um, I was essentially there from the beginning, took that company from zero to essentially $16 million when I left it in full capacity. And it started out as exclusively aerospace. And then we started venturing out in a whole bunch of different things. I've sold everything from power strips. I've sold um, bread knives. Uh, we've sold ladders. We've sold, I, I have sold a couple cool things. Like I sold Gatlin guns that go in helicopters. So um, I was the senior government buyer uh, there, did that for three years. Uh, did a little more than $3 million in, in government contracts, uh, over 120, probably closer to like 130 contracts um, now. And then I managed two other companies selling stuff to DLA on their behalf. And then outside of that, uh, I'm finishing up my flight training. So next month, I'll take my uh, check ride to become a commercial pilot. And then after that, I'll get my multi-engine rating. And then this summer, uh, I'll be a certified flight instructor and then hoping to get based in Atlanta and go teach some good folks how to land planes out there. And then outside of that, uh, I'm an endurance runner. Uh, I got a couple of marathons under my belt, got, got, got a half marathon coming up in two weeks. And then I'm going to Australia uh, later in the, probably like August, September to go run a marathon there. Then I convinced my mom, who's our VP of operations at Two Lines Aerospace, to come to Budapest with me to run another marathon. Um, I'm going to be doing seven marathons on, uh, seven continents. So that's just a little bit about me. And, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm 21. I am, I oh was just God. able to buy a beer last year was the first time I could go to the bar and buy a beer. So, oh my, okay. So there's a lot, to a lot to unpack there. Okay. So 21, I I'm way older than 21. So I'm just remembering what I did at 21. I mean, I was impressive, but like to have all that going on is is super super beyond impressive as i'm sure mo many people have told you um i'm really happy to have you here and again like i said that's a lot to unpack and the questions and the comments are coming in so let's just start with you said that your company is your family company so your yeah. your your dad started government contracting or was it a company yeah. before government contracting yeah. Okay. So uh, what, another thing I forgot to mention, I'm a, I do have a consulting and educational firm. I don't, that's, that's what I came, what we came on here. To I forgot about that. I'm the, I'm the founder um, and creative director of my consulting and educational firm, Namiad LLC. We've worked with, uh, we're coming up on a hundred companies. I think we're at 97. So if somebody wants to join and be the hundredth company here, I got a little surprise for whoever wants to be company number 100. And we've worked with over a hundred companies and helped uh, generate over $600,000 uh, in receivables for them. Now, in terms of the government contracting company that I got my start at, uh, it was a family owned business, Two Lines Aerospace, and it existed prior to us getting into government contracting. It was an entirely commercial company selling aviation parts to different airlines around the world. So like um, Ghana, uh, Madagascar, Tunisia, uh, pretty much everything in the Caribbean, um, some companies in East Asia, Turkey and all that good stuff. And then in 2020, nobody was flying. So nobody was buying airplane parts. And then my dad was like, um, okay, I need to go figure out who the hell I can sell this stuff to. And at the time, mm -hmm. um, at the time I had a, I had another business. I was reselling like high end clothing and, and stuff like that. Wait, how old were you when you were doing the clothing business? Good Lord. <laughs> I started my, I started my first company at 16. 
Ah. So this is Nami Ad is currently my fourth is my fourth one. Um, and at that point in time, I was doing clothing, and then I was um, I was working I was working at Wawa and bussing tables at two jobs, and I was putting myself through community college because I was committed to Western Michigan to play football, but then COVID happened and um, that got messed up. But he started, my dad started the company. He had asked me to work for him. And at that point in time, I'm thinking I'm the man. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I got two jobs and I got a business. I don't need this. I got two jobs. I'm <laughs> feeling good about myself. And then uh, he's like, no, nah, come on, come on, come on. And I still didn't want to do it. And then I met a friend of a friend. Um, if anybody's familiar with the movie War Dogs, which I think is like the most famous government contracting movie out there. Um, I actually met a guy who was living in the penthouse that they filmed the movie in, in Miami. And he was like, I did a favor for him. I helped him out with something and he invited me over and he was like, Hey, what are you, what are you doing? I like your moxie kid. And then I was telling him, I was like, Oh, I'm working at Wawa. I got a job busting tables and I'm selling clothes, um, like reselling high end clothing. And then he was like, nah, you got to do bigger ticket sales. And I was like, what does that even mean? And at, mind you at the time I'm 18. So I'm like, I don't even understand what the concept of a ticket is. And then he's like, dude, you got to do bigger ticket sales. Like, tell me, tell me what you have in your immediate vicinity that you can use to make more money. Cause he's like, oh, you got the, you got the skills. And I was like, oh, my parents are trying to do this government contracting thing, but it's a startup. And if I go there, like, I'm going to be making like $10 an hour. Like, I don't really think I want to go do that. I'm making more money now. And then he's like, bro, screw what you're making now. Think big picture, long-term, go do that. Leave leave working for somebody else, go build something with you and your family and, and go do that. Um, and then after, I think after like maybe a month and some change of me working there, I was cold calling. I was just supposed to be doing admin work and like going through a course um, that this one consultant had given us and we paid him 50K and after two weeks, we never heard from him again. So he scammed us, um, which is why I do consulting because I'm like, I, nobody should ever go through that. Pause, and wait a minute. Let's, let's put a pin in that for a second. <laughs> So all of y'all on this call, okay, and the ones who's going to watch it in the future, complaining about his prices, complaining about my prices and other people's prices, they pay 50K and he's still smiling. 50, we paid 50 grand. He was supposed to come to the office and then he was like, oh, it's COVID. I'm scared. So he's like, I'll do it remote. After two weeks, we never heard from him, bro, again. We Look, that's something to say. And they believed it. They believed in this process that much that they were willing to pay 50K. Regardless of what ended up happening, I'm sorry that happened to you guys. But regardless of what happened, you guys believe that, hey, if we do this, it's worth this amount of money because we know we can get more. So that's that's the principle I wanted to put on that. But go ahead. Yeah, no, you're 100 percent right. Even after. Oops, sorry. Even after getting knocked, even after getting knocked in the mouth and being short 50K and they were paying, mind you, they're paying payroll, they're paying rent, they're paying people's insurance. They were hiring people and they took that risk and they're like, yeah, let's expedite this. They still got punched in the mouth. Um, but anyways, I was supposed to be going through that guy's course, watching his videos. And then I just, I love people. I love talking. I'll talk to anybody, anywhere about anything. So I just start like browsing dibs and then I'm just making phone calls. I'm cold calling like the approved sources. Wait, for hold all on. These, What's, all wait, wait, parts. wait, wait, wait. I know you got a lot of energy. Okay. There's people on the call that don't know what in the hell dibs is. So what is dibs? So dibs is the user interface that DLA uses to post contract opportunities, which are called solicitations and then post awarded contracts as well. And then it's also where you go to submit your quote. So it's essentially just the user interface to connect us as firms to the defense logistics agency. So you submit your bids there and it's not like writing a proposal. You literally log on to the, to the website and then you type in like numerical data into the field. So like they say, how much are you offering this to us for? You type in 10 grand. You say, how many days is it gonna be until you can give it to us? You type in 120 days. They say, where is the material coming from? You type in the cage code. They say, where, um, where is it being packaged? You type in like your city and state. So all of that information is like pre-populated for you. And then you're just, the only information that you're providing is stuff, stuff specific to you and your company. So you can submit a quote on dibs and as quickly as, I mean, I've, I've seen people do it in 30 seconds or less. 
<laughs> when you when you're first learning, probably it'll take you about three to five minutes. But um, yeah, it's a bit different. It's a different medium um, than R RFPs. Not better or worse. There's a lot of you know, there's pros and cons to everything, but it's just a different aspect of doing with doing business. And I want to get into the pros and cons a little bit later. But so just just kind of holding right there for a second. So it's almost like an eBay. So it's like I'm putting it. I'm telling you, yeah, I can give you these uh these these screws and bolts. For I can sell it to you, government DLA, for ten thousand dollars. But then, there's, are there going to be other people who are also going to put in their amount for that mm -hmm. same product? Mm -hmm. So how it works is everything is fair and open competition, um, or that's mm -hmm. what it's advertised as now. Like, there's definitely ways once you start to get in with contracting officers, they're like, "Hey, I posted this, but once you bid on it, it's yours." Um, but Essentially, the way I like to compare it is a shopping list. And I just like to say that I'm a glorified like personal shopper for the government. So oh, the government, I love that. I they, love that's that's a good one. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I wish I could I wish I could take credit for that one, but that one's take credit. Look, we don't know, we never heard it. So we're gonna we take credit for it. <laughs> so the government essentially posts exactly what it is that they're trying to shop for. So the same way you write down a list that's itemized when you go to Publix or Walgreens or whatever, and you're like, hey, I need grapes, I need bananas, and then I need flour, right? So you look at those things and then it gets even more specific. And then there's like, okay, well, do you want the gluten-free flour? Do you want the Walmart brand flour? Do you want the Pillsbury flour? So the government will tell you, okay, I want, you know, in this instance, let's say bolts, but these bolts, they have to be um, coming from this brand and they have to be to this specification kind of thing. So the government tells you exactly what it is that they're, that they're looking for. There's no, there's no guesswork involved. So all you have to do is go out there and hunt it and figure out either who can make it, who can buy it for you, or um, who's willing to sell it to you. So, okay. So we, we're going a little off script, but this is good because I want, I want that same train of thought to go through and make sure everybody, there's a lot of people on this, on this live. So make sure you guys like, like, and share this live. Cause he's already dropping gems. I'm learning right now. As we like, as we comment speak. and subscribe, guys. like comment, subscribe. Y'all know the drill, right? So when you're saying you're hunting for these, for these bolts and screws right mm -hmm. now, if I'm just, I'm just Sheena, I got a home office. And mm -hmm. I don't know nothing about no screws or no bolts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how do I know the best screws and bolts to buy? And can I get them from China? Can I, you know, speaking awesome. of war dogs. Awesome. So there's two, there's two, you asked two questions. One, I'm, I'm going to address the first one. And then the second one has, has, it's a bit convoluted. There's loopholes and stuff in terms Understood. of where you can get this stuff. But so the government will give you the specifications. They'll give you the part number. And the way that they identify things, I like to I like to say it's a social security number or a fingerprint for the part. They use national stock numbers. So a national stock number is essentially like the social security number or the fingerprint for the part. It's going to be NSN, unique. right? NSN, NSN. And national stock number. No two NSNs will ever repeat. If you see that NSN, one NSN in the same place twice is talking about the same part. So the government will use national stock numbers to identify the part. So every single solicitation, what the government is asking for coincides with a specific national stock number. Now there's ways to break it down and there's documents out there that kind of explain it to you. But in short, it's almost like everybody who has like a, a social security number who is born on like the same day, like the first couple of digits of their social start together. So they're all related to each other. So when you look at NSNs, the numbers that, that are compiled in each one they're typically related to each other and they're classified by like a group, which is the PSC code, the product supply code or FSC code, federal supply code. And that's how the government classifies it. So if let's say, you know, there's, let's use the example of ladders, right? Um, let's say there's one ladder and it's just, you know, a Werner ladder, like the big orange construction ones. And then another one is also uh, a Werner ladder, but one is 10 feet tall and then one is 12 feet tall. So they're going to have NSNs and they're going to be very similar, except like the last couple of digits are going to be a little bit different. Um, so that's how you're going to identify them. And then there's a nomenclature that coincides with every NSN as well. So every single national stock number also has a, a nomenclature and name for the part. So it'll say these, this NSN, these bolts, and then there'll be a part number as well. And they'll have the approved source. So the approved source is the manufacturer distributor that DLA would like you to get the material from. It's not the end all be all. It's not the only place that you have to get it from, but that's the place that in an ideological world, DLA would like to be getting this stuff from. Okay. A pin in that. 
So why is DLA recommending these places to get mm -hmm. it from? Is it because mm -hmm. they've already someone else recommended th those companies before those manufacturers before? So uh, a couple different reasons um, to become an approved source. The first, the first like measuring stick or the first criteria is like, okay, are you registered with the government, right? Because there's a lot of companies out there that do phenomenal stuff, but they just don't even know that government contracting exists. They're not registered with the government. They don't have a cage code. So sometimes it's simply just the companies that happen to be able to make or manufacture the screws that the government's asking for, and they have a cage code. And then DLA is like, all right, here, we'll give it to you. You guys are the approved source. And then sometimes it's based on like, you know, a company's track record or, or something like that. Um, or sometimes it can be based on like if a company's done work um, like with the government before, if they've done extensive commercial work or something like that. So those are some of the factors that go into picking um, who the approved source is for every single part. But you can always provide alternates, which is a it's a rabbit hole. But um, <laughs> sometimes when these contracting officers or, or the algorithm spits out these um, solicitations on DLA, You'll only see one or two companies on the approved source page. But then if you look, there's a whole bunch of different softwares out there, like too many for me to name. But if you look at different softwares, you can literally put in like the national stock numbers or the NSNs, and then it'll show you there's actually like nine or 10 different companies that actually manufacture the part and that are approved that you can sell the material to DLA to. It's just the people that are issuing these solicitations they're responsible for so many solicitations. They can't know every single thing about every single kind of product market. Give us two softwares that we can use. <laughs> so you can use, all right, I'm giving away. This is like some, this is some all very, right. very free game. I better hit I'm that gonna, super chat. Cause I'm he's gonna, doing, I'm he's gonna, doing, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say the two softwares, but you guys better freaking like comment and subscribe. I'm going to say him. I'm going to say him, but y'all better like comment and subscribe because people pay a lot of money to look, to figure out what these softwares are. Real talk. You can, use, you can use NSN now and you can use parts base. Rewind NSN that. now. NSN right. now or parts base. Those are the two, those are the two software. Those are the best ones. There's other ones that are cheaper. Some are quicker, some are, are better. But y'all better like, comment, and subscribe because people pay a lot of money to figure out the, to figure out which ones work. So y'all better like, comment, and subscribe. Because I just gave you guys some that gives you information that the general public doesn't have access to. That is like that's like that you makes down you the rabbit hole to find it. <laughs> if you ever, if you ever watch the Avengers, like that makes you Thanos right there. Like I, I wish I was joking, but I'm not. Those two softwares will, if you're, if you're winning ten grand a month, what I just told you, if you use those two, you'll easily go to fifty k a month, easily. Yo, okay, look, easily. Y'all acting like you're not appreciating this young man. He's a, he's giving us so much information just in these. We've been on for eighteen minutes, okay. And about two minutes or three minutes was him introing himself. So you all like this is a lot of amazing information. He just he just pretty much put his stamp of guarantee on there. Like, oh, if you have this, you'll you'll get it. You'll if get you use, if you use those two and you are not doubling what you're currently doing with DLA, something's wrong with you. Like you need to do a self evaluation. And that's not even me like exaggerating. Like I I use these software so much my own self that I literally overuse the amount of searches and I make like free email. I make accounts and like repeat emails to use like other, other accounts. And I, I get the paid service and I max out the paid service. And it's just so good that I make, uh, I make multiple accounts. And that's another gem right there. So just pause right there because we got to catch a, a breath. This is, this is amazing information. Like I am, I'm learning a lot in this moment. So um, you got just so much, so many people giving you wonderful things to say. Um, so it was it Los, Los Angelo, uh, work with DLA in the army. Oh, someone asked if you are a veteran as well. You're not a veteran, right? I am not. I am not a veteran. Almost. I almost ended up becoming one. The Air Force Academy offered me the opportunity to play football there, but it was oh, wow. just a 10 year commitment. And I was just like, I will never, I, I'll be 33 by the time I'm able to start even like bidding on on contracts not that that's not that that's, ooh, ooh, not that that's, no. that's, not, that's not what i'm saying i'm just I, know, I, know. It's just I would have foregone like 10 years of entrepreneurship if i would have done oh, that yeah. oh yeah you had you already had other plans like so you know the military for most of us it was a last resort so i'm with you a thousand percent um so he said he's 21 prunette um who's this 
Clearly, I haven't been to me, me and you both. Everything you is both relative. Everything is relative. <laughs> Everything is relative. I love it. I love it. Um, this is Miss Cecile. She's a. You said I am. Oh, you're in. Okay, not Indiana. I'm thinking you talking about Indiana. Um, and Los Angeles said he's going to be the hundredth person because you said that. Hey, listen, there's we're at ninety seven right now. So if three of you guys join, whoever's the hundredth, I got something very very special for you guys. I'm not going to say what it is. But I'll tell you, whoever is number 100, you're going to get significantly more than what you paid for. I can guarantee you that. So, how? okay, so let's just jump right to it right now. Like, where, where are they signing up to be the, the 98th, 99th, and 100th? Where are they you signing guys up? Can, you guys can, um, oh, you know what? I'm so glad you brought that up because I'm running a sale right now specifically for this, specifically for this. So the recorded version of my course, Ignore to Award, it takes you from A to Z. If you've never registered in SAM, you've never done anything with dibs, if you don't even understand how the federal government works, all the way to reading the solicitations, bidding on the contracts, getting pricing and availability. Like I literally gave you guys a phone call script, which I also talked about on my YouTube channel, but I give you guys a phone call script. I broke it down. Like I told you step-by-step step what to do. And then once you win the contract, how to package, how to invoice, how to ship, how to receive, how to get paid, all that good stuff. That is usually $9.99. And for the, that's for the recorded version. To learn it like live, it's $1,500. But the recorded version is $9.99. If you go on my website and you use code YouTube, all caps, promo code, it's $7.50. So you're saving, you're getting 25% off. And that's lasting only until midnight this Sunday. And that's specifically for you guys. I'm glad that you guys um, brought that up. And What's the website? Let me put it up right now. NamyadLLC.com. N O M Y A D L L C dot com. Okay. okay, let me make sure I don't mess this up now because I'm trying to get y'all this sale. Okay, NamyadLLC.com. Correct. Okay, so let me put that up and then you guys. Like, let's just, just get right to it right now. Like, I mean, why not? Right? So, this is what. This is the site you guys need to go to. And he told you that the promo code is YouTube in all caps. All caps. YouTube, all one cap, word. And you get 25% off. And he's teaching you everything there is to know about federal and DLA. Okay. DLA and DIB. So I mean, dang. <laughs> I didn't leave, I didn't leave any any stone unturned. And I can I, I don't I I'm not gonna make this guarantee for everybody that signs up, but I can tell you the people that sign up. And they meet the criteria because I tell you exactly how many bids you need to be submitting, how many phone calls you need to make. You could go look on my LinkedIn. Don't don't talk to me. Talk to the people I've worked with. You can. And this is taxpayer dollars. So you look up their cage codes like don't even listen to me. I'm not lying. It's taxpayer dollars. If you that. adhere to exactly what I tell you to do, there has not been a single person that it has taken longer than 45 days to win their first contract. Realistically, people are doing it in as the quickest I've seen is two weeks. We just had a lady. Um, we just had a lady do it in, in three weeks. Um, I had a gentleman who I took from point A to point Z. He did it in 42 days. Um, so if you adhere to exactly what I told you to do, I can guarantee that you'll do it in 45 days. If you meet the criteria in terms of the amount of bids you submit, the phone calls that you make and the RFQs that you send out, I can guarantee it that you will be successful if you meet those criteria. So you hear what he said, right? Because a lot of y'all will be like, oh, this and that didn't work, but you didn't follow the steps. You broke the rules and you wanted to come just by magic. There's no shortcuts. There's no, shortcut. There's no shortcuts. Now you can choose how swiftly you want to do it, but he's letting you know that, oh yeah, you can get there really quickly because there's a lot of people that go through my course. Since I teach about all three, federal, local, and corporate, they want a contract today. So I don't mind. Y'all hop over to his course and- <laughs> You want something in 45 days or two weeks? Hop over to that so you can get to the promised land. I don't care how you get there. Just get there. Okay? Yeah, somebody get there. I don't care if it's me. I don't care if it's Sheena. I don't care if it's Eric Coffee. I don't care if it's Kizzy. Just get there. Just get there. Just get there. Do the work. I love that. So there's like so many comments. So let me just make sure we get through these and then we're going to circle back around. So make sure y'all look at this. Go to the site and the promo code is YouTube all caps so you can get your 25% off. He's giving you game right now. So, and I ain't seen their super chat. I got an attitude. And there's a lot of people on the live. So make sure y'all like, okay, comment and subscribe if you're not already. All right. So free game. Yes, for sure. Um, someone asked if you can repeat the software. One more game, please. Uh, NSN Now and NSN Partspace. Now. 
Those are the two that are going to give you government data. Um, and then I'm going to give you guys even more. I'll give you guys even more free games. So NSN now is cheaper than parts base, but parts base you can also use as a parts marketplace to get access to pricing and availability that other companies don't have. Um, like the general public does not have if you sign up for, for parts base. So they give you government data and it is a parts marketplace. And I went, they should be paying me, um, to be endorsing this. I just spoke at their conference. They told me that they were going to pay me, but I, they didn't pay me, but I just believe in the product so much that I'm, I'm telling you guys this anyways, even though I'm not getting paid to endorse it. That's how I feel about Gov Directions. I'm like, uh, y'all just got rid of the affiliate program and I'm still talking about y'all, but you know, Literally. it's all about getting people to the promised land. So you got some thank yous and some gems, good stuff. Um, is that Jagoda? There was a question that I really wanted to, oh, this one, have I ever used GovGistics? Boom. Phenomenal question. GovGistics is now a subsidiary of Partspace. So if you get Partspace and you, you're using their GovGistics, then you also get access to their parts marketplace. That's a phenomenal question. Whoever asked that, they've been doing their research. So good, good on Okay, me. Jagoda Moore. Okay, bow, bow, bow. We love it. Um, incredible stuff says Candace. And is there a Cecile Alexander in here? If there's a Cecile Alexander, please comment because Cecile Alexander here. just Cecile Alexander just 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 just, just hopped on the Namiad on the Namiad train. Hey! I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have to look. I'm gonna have to look to see what number she is. But uh, yep, she's right here. She's my student too. She's a phenomenal lady. Very, very, very bright lady. She speaks like 15 languages. <laughs> I love her. Yo, Let me look. She Miss, said, yes, that's me. <laughs> Miss Cecile, I do want to mention. So you ended up, um, you you signed up for the live version of the course. You need to be getting the recorded version of the course. So um, the live version is, is 1500 and that's every time I host a, a boot camp. But I can, I'll be more than happy to give you a, a refund or you can, you know, hop on the, hop on the train for the next, uh, for the next live boot camp that I'm going to be doing probably in like, uh, I'll probably be doing it in May, the next live boot camp in May. You still get access to all the course content. Um, or I can give you uh, I can give you that, that $250 credit, whatever you want, but shout out Miss Cecile, Miss Cecile pulls triggers. She's an action taker. That's somebody I know who's going to get, who's going to get her first contract soon because she's an action taker. She's pulling she triggers. Is. She is. She's, she's super, just, she's super phenomenal. So she's going to um, contact you after. So um, Cecile, I'll go ahead and give you his number after the call, but let's continue on with everything here. So let's see. Um, let's see. Let's see. Got a question. If a person worked for the state, is it a conflict of interest? Um, you can answer, I can answer that as well, but you can go ahead and answer if you want. So in, in my experience, I've worked with people that have worked directly for the state. Actually, fun fact. Um, one of the first clients that I ever got, the biggest contract that I've ever seen a startup get, he won two of them and it was for $220,000 and he worked for the Florida state park service. And he got two contracts, each one for a um, hundred and ten grand, and then another one for a hundred grand. So, I mean, yeah, if, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, and so um, for those who don't know my story, I was active duty when I first started, and so really, you can't give a contract to yourself. That's the basis of it. Um, if it shows that you had some kind of collusion, some kind of leg up. That's what gets you in trouble. Um, also, if you are a service disabled veteran owned small business and you have the set aside, this is what happened to me. Um, I came up active duty and became a DOD civilian. So as a DOD civilian with the SDVOSB certification, I could not bid on those set asides, which was weird. I'm like, so I'm active duty and I can, but not a DOD civilian. So read the FAR. That's the, that's the answer. Read the FAR. Um, but basically, that's pretty much what it is. And I also um, want to clarify that depending on the level of government that you work with, that's going to impact your ability to win. So this gentleman worked for the state and he was told that he, that like the, the instance that I'm referencing with the two contracts, he could not bid on state contracts because he worked for, for the state, but at the federal level, he didn't, he didn't have any issues, but I have had a company where it was a couple and then one worked, one was active duty. Um, and then one was not, and it had to be two separate companies, like not even the same address. Like she couldn't be involved at all. So mm -hmm. just to be, you know, fully transparent, it depends on what level of government that you, you work with. And then, um, I, also you gotta be conscious of, you know, where the address is, who's, you know, the principal, uh, employee of the company, all that good stuff. Yeah. And, you know, just, 
just read it, it. They usually, especially when it comes to local contracting in general, they usually ask like, hey, is this going on in your company? So just make sure you pay attention to that. And then uh, Los Angeles said he spent seven forty on tires. <laughs> so, hey, listen, we offer buy now, pay later with Klarna. That sales going on until midnight Sunday. Get in where you fit in. Get in where you fit in. So um, let me see. Let's let's go down. And I want to. So also, you got another person said they're signing up. That is. I saw she said thank you, my young Haitian king. Oh, yeah. thank you. I appreciate it. Tout bagay en forme. Hey, <laughs> I love it. I love it. And then you have, um, is it Prosetta Berry? Thank you so much. You are brilliant. I know you've been hearing that your whole life. <laughs> uh, um, my my brother, <laughs> my brother wants to bid on uh, to bid with the government, but he owes back taxes. Oh, that's Can actually I take this one, please. Okay, so I'm not gonna tell you yes or no because that's not up up to me. But you have to state that when you sign up in Sam, um, which I do discuss how to do that in Ignore to Award. But you do have to tell them if you are subject to any federal withholding. And then depending on the amount and then the reason and the kind of tax taxes and what bracket you're in, that's gonna determine whether or not you get approved. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I know a lot of people who. They owed taxes after they were signed up and they still were able to, you know, make smart decisions as a business owner and as a person. So, I mean, we don't all look good in orange. So just do be smart. So, yeah, there's there's loopholes to everything. But, you know, when Uncle Sam is ready for his money, he going to come and get his money, whether you're ready or not. OK, cool. So um, question. Have you ever used Dibs Navigator? If so, did you like it? I can't speak on Dibs Navigator. I've I've worked with companies that have used it. Now, I'm not saying that Dibs Navigator is, is better or worse. All I'm saying is the companies that I've worked with that have used it, when I've pitched them other softwares, they elected to go with the other softwares just because of the capabilities. But with that being said, I don't know the price point of Dibs Navigator, and I don't know what their user interface looks like. So maybe there's a difference in price point and the value trans, like the the value add maybe lines up better with Dibs Navigator. But typically, when I offer people other options, they go with the other options. Got it. Okay, there's a lot of Haitians in on the call. You know what I'm saying? I knew Cecile let's was go, too. Let's go. <laughs> Love it. Love it. So um, next question, can felony can, well, felons do business with the government? So answer. go ahead. You answer. Yeah. You guys can do, you guys can do business with the government. You just have to disclose um, when, when you, you have to disclose what you got um, convicted for and then when you got convicted. But uh, I've worked with, I've worked with somebody who's actually convicted for a federal crime. Wow. Damn. Okay. Yeah. So with that, yeah, it, a lot of times, it, cause I work at the local level too. Sometimes they don't ask, but if they're asking for a background check, um, then you already know what time it is. And I've seen some people with misdemeanors not get approved and they're going to be outside. So it really just depends. It depends but, on what you did as well. Very true. Very true. If you stole from the government, I don't, you know, you might count yourself out, but like you said, the federal crime, that's, that's he heavy. did a financial crime too. It was during like it, he got he got caught up in two thousand nine. Um, he got caught up in two thousand nine during like the housing pr like crisis, and he got caught up for wire fraud, and it was like a federal transaction and everything. And when he came to me, he was like, "Yo, I just want to let you know, one, I already have a felony, and two, I've already won contracts with the government." I was like, "All right, cool, let's rock and roll." Bet look, wh whatever gets you there, just be smart, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, okay, so one person has a question about the site, and I don't want to harp on this a little too much, but we're going to talk about it at the end, and also all his information is going to be in the description for a few people that said that they're driving. You'll get his information. Um, he said he's giving you till Sunday to be Sunday number at 90. Midnight. But Sunday yeah, at midnight. To answer your question, Veronica, yes, the 999 one, put in code YouTube. Yeah, that's the one. All right, so um, this question is, I guess, more for me. But I want to get back into because I had a question for you when it comes to the actual product. So when price and janitorial, what percentage of markup is common? Generally speaking, with services and on just a typical end, you go higher, you go lower based on whatever it is you're doing. Um, janitorial is extraordinarily competitive, but really eight to 14 percent. I've had contracts with 40 percent profit. I've had contracts with 1% profit. I've been upside down. So you can't just say, well, I'm going to put this on top and then you'll never win where you just really have to 
figure out what the previous price was, what the government, what the agency is willing to pay, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a lot of things that go into pricing that. But I wanted to go to um, the question I have is, OK, so I see these these screws and these bolts. Right. And the government is looking for a hundred thousand screws. And I ain't got no money, Day. Like, how am I gonna get how am I gonna get this product to the government? Got you. Okay, so there's a couple ways that you can you can go about this. So I always tell people, I'm like, listen, let's let's play the game within within your means. However, if you're trying to be aggressive, because I have worked with some companies and it, this guy who's he was having a kid and he was like, Listen, bro, I got a I got a baby on the way. Like, I gotta make I gotta make something shake. Like, let's get aggressive. And I was like, all right. So here's what you're going to do before you even win a contract, you're going to go. I have a presentation that I have on doing business with DLA. I give it to my clients and I'm like, listen, go over this, learn it, take this to a bank that you already do business with. Tell them, be like, hey, listen, this is who I'm doing business with. Um, these are the contract sizes that I'm going over. This is the predicted margin. The industry average for payment with DLA is 38 days, by the way. You can ask them to pay you quicker than that. They can pay you as quickly as two weeks. Um, but I tell, I tell people, I'm like, listen, go start buttering up the people that you bank with already and tell them, Hey, listen, this is what I'm doing based on, you know, my business history, my credit, what can I reasonably expect in terms of like the loans that I get? So that's one aspect. Then number two, this is you, you, I don't want to say you get put between a rock and a hard place because I've done this before, but it is, it's uh, it's gutsy. So you can get net 30 from the people that you're getting the, the, let's say the people that are giving you these quotes, right. Or they're giving you the bolts, right. You can be like, Hey, can you get me net 30? So they give it to you net 30 and then you win the contract, right? So now you have 30 days from the time you place the order with the vendor to then ship it to them before you're responsible for payment. Now as you, you better ask them to expedite that shipping. You're going to have to, you're going to get squeezed somewhere. So I always tell people, if you're going to do this net 30 method where you don't have the money and you're playing with invisible money, and you're, you're going to get them to float it to you. And then you're going to wait for a couple of weeks until the government pays you. I always say, take the risk and pay for them to at least expedite the shipping. So you can get it later that week. Then you package them, ship them, send it to the government, and then you can ask them to expedite payment. Now, depending on the kind of contract, the government might take up to 2% off. Like it might be like 2% 20 days or something like that, or 1% 10 days or, or whatever the case may be. So they might take off a, a percentage off the top over the overall transaction. They'll expedite that payment to you. Then you turn around, let's say it was each screw was, a, each bolt was a dollar. You were selling it for... I don't know, two dollars, right? Which is 100 percent margin. This is la la land, right? But <laughs> you you sell it to the government. The government gives you 100 grand. They take two percent off, so they really pay you 98 grand. So now you're left with 198 grand. You take that 100 grand, give it to your vendor, and boom, you're left with your profit. So that is one methodology. Only do that if you have the stomach for it. It's not for everybody, <laughs> and things can go wrong. I have been on the other side of that, but you can do that. Okay, so there was several things you said in there that I just want to make sure is clear. So great, awesome advice. So the banking thing now, for those of us who have, who are not 21 and our credit has been, <laughs> has been through the ringer. Now I just want to be realistic because that's just who I am. It's very, very challenging for minority businesses. Even if you've been doing business with this bank for forever in a day, it's very challenging for us to get even a line of credit. So for those of us who have tried that, it didn't work. Um, I really like your second method. So yes, if you have a banking relationship, butter them up, do what you need to do, bring them a contract, bring them a solicitation. Maybe they'll hear you out. Maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't. But for the net 30 method, you mentioned it do the government may give you in advance. Now, is that also on the other end, a discount? Cause the first thing I thought about is I'm offering the government a discount to pay me faster. Is that synonymous? No, it's, not a, it's not in advance. So you still have to package and ship the material. They'll just pay you quicker than they normally would. Cause industry average is 38 days. Sometimes they pay you 30 days. Sometimes when you do a lot of transactions, like they'll pay you in a lump sum in like 40 days or something like that you can just submit a request and depending on the contract and the logistics of it, like how quickly it needs to get to where it's going or bit how, how much of the material they're forecasting to use once they receive it, they might pay you two months in advance at no problem. Maybe they take 2% off the top. Um, but that's kind of like the net 30 method where you're kind of like doing like a short squeeze almost, if you will. 
I got you. So how am I asking the government, look, can you give me, can you pay me in advance? Because I talk about it, how I got in advance, but it was mm -hmm. nothing like what you just said. Okay. So there's, <laughs> there's two methods with DLA. So the first of which is when you're submitting your bid, you tell them like the credit terms. It literally said there's a little box that says credit terms when you're submitting your bid. And it says uh, you can do net 30, you can do half a percent, 10 days, 1% 10 days or 2% 20 days. And you're literally telling them, hey, listen, I'll give you a discount if you pay me in discount. Gotcha. So you can do that. Yeah. Or what you can do is after you win the contract, you can submit a PAR. A PAR is a post award request to edit any of the any facets of the contract. So you can submit a PAR to tell DLA, hey, um, I'm going to need an extension on this date. You can submit a PAR to tell DLA, hey, you wanted 100. I can only give you 98. You can submit a PAR to ask them to pay you. You can submit a PAR to be like, hey, the person that I told you I was going to get you guys sold out. So I'm going to offer you guys something else. So you can do a whole bunch of different things in the realm of PARs. Just because you request them, though, doesn't always mean that they're going to be approved. I want to put that out there. But the second methodology is to submit a PAR and ask them to expedite payment. Got it. That's fantastic. And like you said, though, things can go wrong. So don't just, you know, have that as your, your only way. And this was a question I was actually going to ask myself um, is the packaging the product. So this is not drop shipping. This is yes and no. You can okay. have companies drop ship on your behalf, but only companies that are registered with the government and know how to do it's called like we call it mill spec or mill pack packaging. So military specification packaging or mill pack, like military pack packaging. Um, so companies that know how to do that and do your research because companies are out here preying on new companies and be like, yeah, we'll do your mill pack packaging for you. And then, then you ship it to the government and then you get dinged on your SPUR score, which is a supplier performance risk system score. And that's comprised of how well you package, um, how timely you ship, is the material damaged? Do you give them the right quantity? Do you give them exactly what you asked for? Is it on time? Uh, but back to the initial question, you can have other companies outsource it, but then you have to one, get that clarified um, either prior to the contract, prior to you bidding the contract, or you have to submit a PAR. And if you submit a PAR, it might not get approved. Um, so don't rely on that method if you can't reasonably package it. Um, and then the company also has to have a cage code and be already registered with, with DLA. So just because a company has a cage code doesn't mean that they can package for you. They have to be registered with DLA as well. Um, now, those are kind of like the, the scenarios where you can do your packaging. But I'm a very big proponent of learning how to do it on your own because you are going to be you're going to be hurting for a very long time in terms of paying those packaging fees before you start to see some some pro positive profit and it's already hard enough when you're bootstrapping to turn a profit in business um we really didn't even make a profit until our third year and we were making millions of dollars and we were mm. we had so much we we had we were borrowing money so we were getting a really bad interest rate um, and then we had to pay down our line of credit. So this was literally the first year we turned the profit. And one of the main components of that is I was the packaging guy. My mom and I were the packaging guy. We didn't have, we didn't pay somebody to do that. We figured it out on our own. Now, granted, I teach you guys how to package and ignore to award, <laughs> but I right. strongly recommend that if you are a startup, please learn how to do the packaging on your own because you are going to get punched in the mouth when it when it comes time to look at your statements at the end of the month and you're looking at your your PL and then you're like, damn, like literally all the revenue, all the profit that I had on this contract literally went to the packaging and shipping. So, wow. Yeah. That's OK. So, again, a lot to unpack there. So um, just going back up a little bit about factoring now the thing about factoring is you have to have an active invoice so you may not even have a, if this is your first one you may not even be able to get and also the factoring companies have to approve more than likely they'll approve you know dla but still that's a, a whole process you're like okay yeah. i want this contract let me factor and it takes 60 days for them to go through all your stuff you have no revenue no nothing you may not even get approved for factoring so um this person i'm sorry skylar solution you did ask this twice and i apologize for missing it have but i ever worked with aviation fuel um i mean unless i'm flying the plane i don't like to deal with that stuff um it's hazmat and you got to get dg certified which is dangerous goods certified hmm. and you just 
pay like four or five hundred dollars and then you can go to a course like you can get dg certified anywhere and you just go do it over the weekend um but my issue with hazman stuff is not that it's that you have to get dg certified it's just all that stuff either has a shelf life or needs to be stored at a certain temperature or in a certain kind of like location or warehouse. So if you are going to deal with av fuel or jet fuel or propane or anything like that, you probably are going to need a temperature controlled warehouse. And then you're also going to have to understand that you're going to have to sell it within a certain time frame because that stuff has a shelf life. Very good advice. Okay. Awesome. And um does dla work with granger granger so they do but it's super saturated like i i would never i never steer anybody towards the direction of granger i used to steer people towards mcmaster car and they started winning but then the more con the more companies i worked with i was like okay i can't send all you guys to the same place so now one of the services that we offer um depending on what kind of package you, you sign up for when you work with us is we'll help you pick a product market and i literally will walk you through doing the market research um but to answer your question yes dla does work with granger but it's a very saturated market your margins are going to be razor thin if you win anything with them yeah because they charge their price too right so it's yeah. not like you're getting it from a manufacturer all yep. right so we got a, a nice long question here los angelo um i have an it consulting firm that i will use immediately post army career can i use this llc for non-it business does a name matter when doing business initially and does your course cover that um so the second part of that question where you asked does my course cover it i'm hoping that you can maybe elaborate on what specifically they they cover but if you're talking about does the name matter when doing business initially if you look at the name of my company, it's literally my government name, but just backwards. My parents were just like, just, they made me and my brothers all go through the process of signing up for LLCs. All of our company names are our government names backwards. So your name literally does not matter. Our company name is Two Lions. Um, and it's literally, um, and it's literally, day the website doesn't give. Okay, I'm going to oh, address you can, that. You can see the questions. Okay, I didn't know you could see them. Yeah, yeah, I can, <laughs> I can see them. Um, so yeah, the name of your company does not, it does not matter um, when you do business with the government. Our company name is Two Lions, and Lions is spelt incorrectly on purpose. Both of my parents are Leos, and then the street that we grew up oh, on Leo is energy. Lions Road. Yeah, I'm Big actually. I was Leo supposed energy. to be a Leo. I was just born two weeks early, and my other two signs, which I only know this because my mom, are also Leo. But she, my mom was <laughs> like, "That would be three Leos in the house at one time." Like God was doing this yeah. service That's if that happened. Um, I like your parents but, already. Um, okay. So let me, I'll, I'll hop in. And so same thing you think about GoDaddy, right? I'm sure when he came, when he presented that name, people are like, what? So does it matter? Not really, but you have to be able to live with it. When I first started government contracting, I was in real estate. And when I came over to government contracting, I hated the name. So I couldn't live with it and I changed it. So it's really about you. If you feel kind of squeamish or embarrassed about your name, it's all about you know, it being on the forefront to the government or to anyone. Like, does it, they say confused minds don't buy. So if it's confusing, you know, you might want to reconsider it, the, the name, you know, that type of thing. All right. So a couple more questions. At what stage does DCMA start to request site visits? That's a phenomenal question. This okay. person, I don't, I don't know who's asking these questions, but these people are asking great questions. So DCMA <laughs> is the Defense Contract Management Agency. So it's going to vary based on what kind of product market you're in. It's going to vary based on your location. And it's going to also vary how much business you've done with the government. So for us, DCMA started showing up like within the first six months of us, of us working. And DCMA, the Defense Contract Management Agency, they're completely independent of DLA. And we have a joke in aviation. We say that the FAA is essentially the big boogeyman. That's the Federal Aviation Administration. Real DCMA tall. is the boogeyman of, of DLA. They are not happy until we are unhappy. That is <laughs> that is DCMA. And they don't give a damn about your lead time or when you're supposed to ship it. If you're not in compliance and you didn't pass that DCMA audit, they're like, I don't care. It's not going to DLA because I didn't sign off on it. It doesn't look good to me. So to answer your question, reasonably expect if you're consistently doing business with DLA to get your first DCMA audit within the first year, like that's highly likely i can't give you a percentage but it's very probable it could be within the first three months it could be within the first six months and then they also don't have to tell you when they're coming they can just show up they just show up and knock on your door 
um, and just be like, hey, listen, I saw that your company was listed here. I'm the new DCMA guy or gal that's assigned to this area. Uh, I wanted to come by and just check in and see how things are going and how you're following, uh, how you're following stuff, how you're following like procedures and stuff. So on that, do you have to have an official office or can you do it out your home? You can do it out of your home. Like, okay. all, so probably out of like, out of like almost a hundred companies or hopefully a hundred by the time I, I log <laughs> off and I check my, I, I check the website and my emails, um, probably like I would say close to 60 of them have been home offices. And then the other like 30 ish have been, um, like companies with businesses or established companies or, or whatever the case may be. Um, now, okay. even if you do, um, even if you do operate out of your home, you still have to be in compliance with um, DLA's quality assurance requirements and all that stuff, which is a whole loophole whole you thing can, on its own. Yeah, I, I literally talked about different. that for like an hour in in the course, and that's just cybersecurity compliance. The, in right. terms of like passing audits and stuff, you need to have paper trails of um, pretty much every every aspect of the transaction. Like I teach you guys how to create a folder to pass the audit. If you've ever dealt with an IRS audit, it's not fun because you can't work. You're doing every you're all your business stops because you're just looking for the paperwork. So I teach you guys how to essentially create a folder where as you go, you're just adding the stuff in there as it becomes relevant. And then once DCMA comes, it's like, do your Sorry, worst. Yeah. Like here, here, here's everything that you could possibly ask for. So it's and already done. Also, D DCMA doesn't have to request a site visit. They can just show up. So he said within a year. So just always be ready. If you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready, right? Yeah. Um, so does this, did you already answer this meaning first package or yeah, you already answered that. So within a year. Um, and so I see this question, but so next code is based on the industry. So that's not really like a separated question. I want to, I want to talk about this though. Please it says, me. what is the next code when searching for opportunities in Sam? So I don't know about Sam. Um, or I do know, I do know the advice that I'm going to give you is applicable to Sam, but specifically for DLA, a lot of people think that next codes are the end all be all, but there's, it's almost like a funnel when the government classifies things. So your NAICS codes are very broad and then you have your product service codes, right? So I, Sheena, I'm, I'm sure with your business, like doing janitorial services, there is a PSC code, a product service code that coincides with janitorial services. Yes. There is a product service code that coincides with like aviation structural components for, for my stuff. So when you're doing your searches, you can search by NAICS codes and it will give you information and contract opportunities and all that stuff, but you're going to get like the broadest, you know, search results ever. And then it's also not going to include everything. It, these things are just automated systems. And they only do what we tell them to do. They can't know, oh, okay, you know, Veronica wants to sell specifically office furniture or something like that. They can't know that. So the best way to, to search, if you're trying to do market research or corner a product market and get a niche, which hopefully we can talk about a little bit later on, is um, you want to search by product service code. That's going to give you the most specific contracts or contract opportunities that are relevant to um, your your product market or whatever your field or your niche is. NAICS codes give you broad stuff. So it goes NAICS codes. That's the top of the funnel. Then in the middle of the funnel is PSC codes, FSC codes. And then at the very bottom is like your NSNs where that's like the social security number for the part. And the NSN is a subsidiary of the FSC code. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's perfect. So NAICS code is based on your industry, but like he said, with the PSC code, it makes it more specific, but really you, it's still human based, right? Cause I, there's been janitorial contracts that were under facilities, and there's also a janitorial NAICS code. So really it's whoever puts it in, however they categorize it, you, it's like you said, it's not the end all be all. So you just have to make sure that when you're searching, that you're searching for the right thing, you're searching in more than one way. And these are humans generally putting in these solicitations. They may not always be categorized properly. So um, is it not NJ mommy? DCMA <laughs> equals DLA boogeyman. Booga, 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 yeah. booga. <laughs> Look, so there are, Lots of people on. Everybody better hit a like right now. Right now. Hit a like. better like, comment, subscribe, <laughs> share this with your mama. With your and best now, friend. Super chat. He's dropping like the knowledge. He's dropping all the knowledge right now. You guys can go out here essentially and get started right now. And I have a YouTube channel where I'm giving out free games. Oh, yeah. That's somebody there. asked for it. Somebody asked for it. What is it? What's your channel? It's literally my name, Day Cantave, D-A-Y-C-A-N-T-A-V-E. 
Okay. If you just and type that into you? YouTube. Honestly, this video might come up first, and Eric, uh, my interviews with Eric Coffee might come up first. But I promise you, if you look, like I'm, I'm in there. I just started only less than a month ago, but we're at oh, 500 subscribers, and we're coming. We're coming. Oh yeah, you definitely moving. You'll be, we're you'll coming. be. Are you monetized? Not yet. Not yet. Oh, I need to get to a thousand. I need to get to a thousand subscribers, but we're coming. No, you definitely in there. Okay, now we talking. Now we talking. Now we talking. Now we talking. Luxury card store. Thank you. Do you want to read this one? Because he's super chatted. Thank you for the super chat. Because and I gotta see how to make you a sponsor. Because uh, now we talking, okay? Because he's giving a lot of information. Is there a way to filter through dibs to find non-military specific? Okay. You must know what all this means. So yeah. <laughs> so is there a way to filter through dibs to find non mil spec cots to get to get just to get started? So, yeah, there is. I'm glad that you, you brought this up. So this question, there's two things that I have to address. If something is mil spec, it's not a commercial off the shelf item. Military spec means that the government has essentially issued uh, either tech docs, C folders, um, technical data. Um, or whatever the case, whatever the case may be, um, for um, for that part, and that's essentially just those are a whole bunch of different ways of saying blueprints for the part. So if you're looking at something and it ha and it's mil spec and it's not a commercial off the shelf item, now I'm gonna give you some very very free game here. I'm gonna give you because you super chatted, I'm gonna give you some stuff again that people pay a lot more than ten dollars to figure out. <laughs> so. Is there a way to filter through dibs to find non mil spec cots? So you want to find cots. For those of you guys that don't know, cots are commercial off the shelf items. That's stuff that you can find on Amazon, Walmart, Home Depot, Best Buy. My first contract was literally for some power strips that I got off Best Buy. Um, so go to write this down, guys. Replay it, screen record it, record my voice. You want to go to Google. You want to type in every spec FSC code lookup. This is going to give you a list of every single FSC code that the government uses, which FSC code and PSC code are interchangeable, but FSC code is specific to products. And then PSC is product, uh, product service class code. So could, uh, PSC is broad and then FSC is just products. Um, but you want to go to every spec FSC code lookup.com. It's going to give you a list of all the things. And then... You want to go to, you want to scroll down and then you want to look for things that are going to be relatively easy to, easy to find. So you, you pretty much have to find like the code that coincides with something that would be commercial off the shelf. But if you look, it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward. Like if you do office supplies or like um, stationary equipment, like that's pens and notepads and, and stuff, you can, you can sell like Bibles and stuff. Like I have one client, she sells, I, I'm not gonna say exactly what she sells, but she sells religious items. I'm not going to put her out there like that, but you can literally just scroll through and look at all the FSC codes and anything that seems relatively simple enough to find if you put that in dibs, then it'll be a commercial off the shelf um, item for you. And that's something that you can find like via Amazon or something like that. You know what? I'll give you guys a niche. I'll give I'll tell you something to go sell right now. Look, he's about, about, like, about to give it to you right now. You better listen up. You, listen you guys up. are going to be like piranhas and somebody's going to take this and make a lot of money off of it. And the first one oh, that does it, I hope you show me my out. $5. Look, I want my $5. When you make all that money, give me my $5. Okay. <laughs> go find the FSC code for photography equipment and go sell Pelican cases. Pelican. thousands of dollars there you go the, the camera cases and the and the projectors you i literally had a client i told him what to do i was like yo listen this projector that dla wants to buy it's on walmart they're expecting to pay 500 dollars for it and it's 370 dollars on walmart you're making 130 bucks on every single projector they wanted 12 and they're like eh, i'll get to it when i get to it go find the fsc code for photography equipment and projection equipment and go sell that it's underserved nobody I, I tell people to sell it all the time nobody wants to sell it so i figure i'll tell <laughs> sheena's people this is shit sheena's people y'all asking great questions y'all better than my people <laughs> now look because look they hear me fussing all the time so they're like look we got to come correct so luxury card store is always a great supporter so we really really appreciate you and then we got Devin over here saying thank you for all l Devin. Thank you for all the gems. We appreciate you so, so, so much um, for the super chat. And again, he just told you exactly what to do. Let me put it up. Pelican cases. 
Pelican cases, okay? I don't even really know what that is for real. Like, I can't. It's just a brand. That's the name of a brand. And Pelican cases, they just carry, like, camera equipment. And they use it for other stuff. Like, they actually use Pelican cases to store, like, any radioactive material or important computers or, like, guns or ammunition or anything like that. Like, you see the, you ever watch, like, army movies and then there's just, like, big cases that are just stacked around outside, like, the bases? Like, those are all Pelican cases. Pelican cell phone. Oh, Okay. Look, I've only been retired for two years and my whole army brain is gone. I'm telling you, like, I, I don't even think about that stuff no more. I'm like, what's a sandbag? I don't remember. It's like, okay, Sheena, come back. You're like, come that back. got nothing to do with me now. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, again, thank you, Luxury Car Store and L. Devin. We appreciate you. So, let's slide down to um, NJ Mommy. I absolutely love this as I've. Uh, had a corporate supply chain background, artist compliance package and procurement, et cetera, right up your look already in the game, already in the game and make sure y'all like, because again, I only see a few likes on here and there's 62 people on this call, which is a lot. Y'all are hanging with us. So do we ask this question yet? Okay. So Los Angelo, although I'm buying your class, are there any books or online content that I can read, learn a lot about this information as a startup? I listen, bro. When you bought, once you sign up for the course, I'd give you a list of books and, and newsletters and stuff that you can read. I tell you where to go to find the forecast information. I take care of you guys. I take care of you guys. So once you once you sign up for it, it's, it's there. And actually, um, I'm actually having some work done on my website right now where it's being improvised and it should be done tonight. But I texted my web developer guy, and as we speak, he is. Uh, making sure that you guys can put that that promo code in. But if anybody signed up for it and the promo code didn't go through, you just let me know um, and I will have my team send you guys the difference. And his information will be in the description. Again, don't y'all hit my DMs talking about give me the information. It's going to be in the description. Okay. I promise you that right after this, uh, right after this call. So boom, somebody asked about credit. We're not talking about credit because this is, that's a business question. And we're talking about specifically um, government contracting. So yes, NJ mommy, I want my $5 when y'all get your money. Okay. Yeah, I want my $5 too. <laughs> For sure. Um, so how do we get mil spec shipping standards? I take care of that for you guys too. If you sign up for the court, I literally gave you a packaging guy that's in compliance with all of that. Um, I honestly, I don't, I, I don't know of like another, honestly, the way that I came across it was because I did a lot of business with DLA and then I got invited to an industry day and mm. then they gave me, they like literally gave me this PowerPoint. And then I was like, is this proprietary information? And they're like, no, it's like free. You guys are taxpayer dollars, like do whatever you want with it. But it just so happened that only the people that were there got it. Um, so again, I take care of you guys, literally packaging guide. I break down the markings. I break down the standards and it's straight from the horse's mouth. I didn't make it. I just got it directly from, from DLA. So from the source. So do you do consultations as well? Like outside of the course? Oh yeah. hundred, hundred percent, hundred percent. So, um, we have, you guys have two different options. So you can do, um, like I like to do retainers. So you either have a, a four session retainer and eight session retainer. And I typically like to meet with people at a minimum of every other week. If any, any more than that, then you lose the momentum. And then it's really, really hard for me to keep tabs on, on like the pulse of your company. Um, but yeah, so four sessions or two sessions and depending on which one you want to go with, um, oh, Los Angeles just asked, which course is best in your opinion, which is exactly what I'm going to talk about. So our best seller is a DLA success bundle. So that includes our course on how to, um, ignore to award, like how to take your business from A to Z with DLA. Then that it also includes how to sell surplus material, which is essentially selling the government stuff back to them at a premium. And then that includes a couple of free webinars and then, um, all of like the informational documents. That's our bestseller. That's 1250. Um, now you have your four session and eight session retainer. So I currently have a gentleman now. He, we talk eight times a month. He's got me on an eight session retainer and he won his first contract in 42 days. I personally like that one because I get paid the most, but all the <laughs> other ones, the, but the, the people are making a here. whole bunch of money. I'm making listen, a lot of money. He's making, I think he'll, he'll be at like probably like nine, nine grand for the month of March already. And like, it's not even over. And he's paid, he pays me. I'll be honest with you guys. I, I charge him four grand for eight sessions, but I'm, I literally just made him nine grand for the month and the month isn't even over. So, I mean, he probably will triple or five X his investment. So just being fully transparent. 
Um, and then if you sign up for the retainer, then you also get all of the course documents and all the other webinars and the informational um, documents, like the packaging guides. I give you guys a phone call script. I tell you exactly what to say. I give you guys an email RFQ template. I literally give you a step-by-step -step bidding process on like how to PDF this as you're bidding this and how to you know organize your folders to pass audits and all that good stuff. And you see that he says that he don't even want to hold you hostage. Like, you know, some of those uh, people that signed up for the credit um, retainers and they will hold you hostage for two years and your credit barely gets to the next level. He's like, look, I'm going to set you up and then release you. So even if you're paying whatever thousands of dollars, you can continue on with the information that he gave you. And I'm sure he might even still be a little accessible. You know, oh, yeah, you guys can still email question. me once you're in. Once you're once you're in, like you're you're in for life. Anybody who signs up for the class, I'm not saying that you know you can call me like directly in my <laughs> yeah. line, but you can send me emails. You just send me emails. I got a team of four people, so we'll we'll help you guys out. And then even if after you're done, like I just one of my one of my clients, um, they literally are now they're at 60k now, and they got in it. They paid me they paid me two and a half grand, and they're at 60k in five months. So if you do the math, that's twelve thousand dollars per month, and they paid me two and a half grand. And I yep. talked to him on the phone yesterday to help him. Uh, right. See, so you guys got to learn to invest in yourselves, however you need to invest in yourselves. Okay, I'm just learning all this information. Is your course des designed for beginners? He a said yes. Z. If you're not, if you've never even done business with the federal government, I explain to you how how that's organized. If you're not registered in SAM, I explain to you how how all that's organized. If you don't know what dibs is, what DLA is, I explain to you. I literally step by step. This button means this. If you click this tab, it will bring you here. If you yes. go to this part of the solicitation, this is what you'll find. So it's designed for all levels. Okay. So look, I and look, I teach about federal, local, and corporate as well. So. You know, if products is not your thing, you know, then you could eat. And also another thing, and I know you're more on the dibs DLA, but you can do products on the local side as well. Like you can yep. sell paper towel to the local school system. So just remember that you can also do that as well if you're not going to do DLA. So let's get back into some of the other questions. So you talked about, and some people kind of came in late. So I, I want to go back to the numbers again. So you said that once you, you took over with the company and you and I thank you for sharing that you guys are just you know at third year in or after the third year you became profitable because a lot of people they feel like if they're not making a gazillion dollars the first month then it's it's a fail and it's like no that's not the way any business works like you might even be profitable at first and then take a huge hit like a lot of us that were around during COVID we took a huge hit but then it went to the moon you know it was just you that just gotta moon. stay you know, in it yeah, you, you gotta, gotta keep. You it. gotta keep running. Like you run the marathons, you just gotta keep running the race. So go back into the numbers a little bit, where you said you started off here. Like, how did the, when the company first started? What was that first invoice or that first month? So our first contract was for four hundred and sixty-five dollars, oh, and I came in exactly five dollars. I thought you were gonna say thousand. No, 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 no. four hundred sixty-five. Well, okay, I'll get. We'll, I'll show you the progression. No, so, it's so, important. Wait, I want before you continue. I, I wasn't laughing because I just expected you to say that. But that's one of the things that people say. Well, I'm not doing something for that amount. But you see where how much he said. If you weren't on before, he's, he's millions very very quickly. So four hundred dollars at the beginning. Whatever. So go ahead. It was four hundred sixty-five dollars. That was our first contract, and we won it. From 42 days from the time we started bidding, that doesn't even include the time where we were getting registered and cage code and all that, all that good stuff. So realistically, it took us almost three months um, to get our to get our first contract, which in the grand scheme of things is really not bad for people that were figuring it out on their own. Three months is not bad at all. Now, four hundred sixty-five dollars by the time I had come, by the time I had come into the business in the capacity of like actually bidding on the contract because I was told not to, but I did it anyways. Um, my first contract was for $184,000 and that was an IDIQ. And that was just because I was making phone calls and stuff. And then this guy was like, okay, I like you kid. I'll help you out. He threw me a bone, gave me a quote. I bid on it. He didn't know it was an IDIQ. I didn't know it was an IDIQ. We won it. And then he was like, oh, damn. We're so who was this keep... person? Wait, wait. So who was who was this person that you called or? Gave... So his name is Kenny. His name is 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 Kenny. I'm not gonna say his last name, but he worked at a manufacturer, like the approved source. And I was calling the approved source, which normally 
it doesn't go well for you as a startup. Like people are not super nice in the beginning when you're trying to get quotes. Um, but like little, another free gem, whenever you talk to people, the last thing you should talk about is business. Ask them about, talk to them about themselves. Talk to the p- people's favorite thing in the world to, is to talk about, people's favorite thing in the world to talk about is themselves because they know about it and they feel knowledgeable. And when they feel knowledgeable, they feel in control. So then they're going to talk more freely and give you more free information, which is how I ended up getting that, that quote, by the way. Um, But I asked them who his favorite football team was. And we liked the same football team. We were both saints fans. And then we were just talking about that. And then we were talking multiple times a week. And then after like three weeks of me nurturing that relationship, and I didn't even expect him to give me anything. I'm just talking to him because I like the guy. He was like, okay, I'll throw you a bone. And then I bid on it. It was straight from the approved source. And then we were in a hub zone at the time and a woman owned um, small business. So it did help. It wasn't the defining factor, but it did help having those set asides. And then my first contract was for 184 grand. Now, granted, that was over the course of a year and some change. So that wasn't all a lump sum. But our first year at Two Lines Aerospace, we made $346,000. We made $346,000. That was our first year. That was revenue though. We were still not profitable. Hey, then look, look, that's the, that's the important part, especially when you're talking about banking and all that kind of stuff, you're getting the money rolling in. It's cut. It's coming in, but you got expenses, you got overhead. And then you got to remember just because you win the contract and then you can count it as revenue. It's, it's not, it hasn't gone to your receivables yet. The government hasn't paid you. So it's like, yeah. it's revenue on the books for the month, but it, it hasn't cash flowed yet. Yeah. So it's not directly in your account either. So that's one thing that I think a lot of people misinterpret about doing business with any, any, any entity where it takes them a long time to get paid. Yeah. Um, and then the next year, we did $3 million. We did $3.4 million. So we 10 X to year two. And that was, I entirely attribute that to, um, I ended up developing some relationships with some distributors. Um, and then we were going to trade shows and we were going to like these conferences and stuff. Listen, guys, last year there were 3.7 million DLA contracts awarded only eight and a half thousand companies got those contracts. So there's, so many contracts that are out there and they're going to the same companies and manufacturers, they don't always like the people that they're doing business with. So you got to go to these conferences network. So that way they can be like, what Candace, Candace, you're a woman owned business and you're in, I don't know, Utah. We need a woman owned business on the West coast that would sell our stuff. Of course here, we'll, we're going to give you low pricing and stuff. Literally. That was the main reason why was entirely relationships that next year, our our output obviously changed and the team grew, but we literally just had relationships. We were going to conferences. Then third year, the third year is when things got got crazy. The third year we did $14 million and then we finally turned the profit. And I also want to add that we did take out loans. We were borrowing the money um, on, on, and we were paying a bad interest rate year two. Mm-hmm. Because we had crossed a million dollar mark, then companies like, okay, we'll loan you money, but the interest rate wasn't good. And that was eating into our profit. It was finally year three when we were able to knock down our, our line of credit. And then they re they helped us refinance and give us a lower interest rate. It, it took us three years and 500 contracts to be profitable now. And that's I, still not bad as far as the amount of time. That's no, not at all. Not at all. Not, yeah. That's not and I want to preface that by saying we have a commercial side of the government and we're 14 people and we take, like we were taking people on trips and we do team dinners every week. Like we have, our accountant is like, oh, you guys spend way more money than you need to, but we take care of our people. If you're a startup and you're not borrowing money, you can be profitable after your first year. Like within 12 months, you can be, you can be profitable. Um, like one of, if you look on, um, I believe Eric Coffey's last interview with me, my buddy Richard, uh, we took him from 70K to 470K and he was profitable at the point in time where he was doing 70K, which was four months into his GovCon journey. So I don't want that to deter you guys, but I also want to be transparent and let you guys know that the profit doesn't always just come first thing. And that's business stuff, y'all. Like that's regular business stuff. This is the fastest to me. I've done it all. If you are new here, welcome but for those who have heard me bitch and moan for months and months and months i have done everything this is the fastest way to wealth to me because you like you said you can go from zero dollars to hundreds of thousands of dollars like that you can't do that in 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 one year or even less my first contract was a hundred thousand over a hundred thousand it was four months and that was something that i didn't even touch a floorboard so you can't do that selling tumblers on Etsy, respectfully. 
So don't even this whole like, well, I want to get it right now, or that's not enough money. Like, where else are you gonna do it? There's nowhere else. Like we talked about day before um the call even started. Where else are you gonna be able to do that? You can't even really do that with real estate for real. Like you still have to do so much, and it may or may not work out with this. You if you sign that contract, it's almost it's 99.9999% chance that you're going to get paid. The only way is like a, a catastrophe happens and you'll get paid. You might be a little bit later, but you'll still get paid. There's almost nothing else that has a guarantee. To the, the day fund. the U S government stops paying their bills, you don't care about money because something way worse is happening. The zombies are coming. <laughs> yeah. We are, we are fighting with the aliens. The death <laughs> beam is pointed at earth. The moment that the U S government's not paying their, their debts and That's even right. real estate, like Sheena said, and not to knock it. I, I mean, I would love to get into real estate and it's, it's great, but in terms of being able to make a couple hundred thousand dollars in a year, you can literally do the net 30 method without any capital. You don't need to take out loans. And then it's, People in other countries invest in U.S. treasuries. Like this is the safest thing that you that you can pretty much be doing. And it's a legally binding agreement with you and the federal government. Like I don't know how much more reassurance, you know, people could could ask for. And I told Sheena, I was like, listen, even if you're cooking crack, even if you're cooking crack, you can't 10x your money like that. No, you would have to work. And it's very dangerous. You have to look over your shoulder. You don't have to look over your shoulder when you're doing this. And thank you, NJ Mommy. She said, this is $5 for both of us. So I'm going to send you your $5, okay? <laughs> I got you. So I wanted to go back to a couple of things, right? So the surplus thing, um, that's something that a lot of people don't talk about. So as a service disabled, veteran-owned small business or a nonprofit, you can get on a surplus list within, for me, it's within the state of Georgia. I'm sure every state does that. Um, but it's basically like the government has a whole bunch of stuff or one thing and they're trying to get rid of it and they will offer it to service disabled veteran owned small businesses and nonprofits for almost like a donation, if you will. So they'll sell Humvees for $650. It yeah. might be in Iowa, but if you're like, well, shoot, I definitely need a Humvee for what I'm trying to do or I'm trying to sell it. Now, with the SDVOSB, they say you can't sell it and it got to be, but you know, <laughs> do what you need to do. But it's the same, like they'll have a whole bunch of um, computer mice or computer keyboards or even laptops, uh, desks, all kinds of stuff. You might need, just need the stuff for yourself. So the surplus thing is a whole other conversation. But for those of you who are research kings and queens, then you'll know to just Google, how do I get on the surplus list? So we got some more money coming in. Like y'all finally like, you know, seeing the value. Cause this man is schooling me. I, I told him, I was like, look, this is one of the only interviews where I really don't know a lot about. So he's giving you this information unprompted because I don't have all the questions to ask. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we appreciate you so much. So luxury car store, again, always a supporter. Question is, since the approved source has a cage code and can uh, and can bid, how do you get a decent quote from them? Or do you need to go around and find another supplier? So good question. I mean, I'm assuming that this person is already doing business with DLA because they're asking very, very good questions. So answer that question, luxury car store. Are you already doing business with DLA or have you just gone down the YouTube rabbit hole like the rest of us? Let us know. Go ahead, so. Man. You can get a quote from them. It might not always be competitive or they reserve the right to be like, no, we're not going to quote you. There's other people. Now, there's a couple different ways that you can go around and getting them. You can you can find other you can find other people that make the part. You can find other companies that are approved sources. You can find other people that have previously sold so the part, and then you can also find the surplus version of the part, which is exclusively what I do now. Now I don't do anything factory new. I like to get my stuff at a premium. The government taxes me. So I'm like, I, I feel like that's unfair. So I'm going to sell the, my stuff back to the government at a premium. And we're even Steven. Um, even Steven. Everybody's doing it. Everyone's doing it. Like we're it's like legal with party. DLA. It's legal with DLA. Yes. Yes. So like, we're just late to the party. We're just now finding out about this and it's, it's, all over the internet and it's, it's it's boutique now, but people have been doing this for years and years and years. And if you small businesses don't go after these contracts, whether it's service or products, all the big companies are just going to continue to get it. That's why I fuss at y'all. Like, what are you waiting for? Like, what are you waiting on? 
So we got, okay, super sticker from Kashan. Thank you. I appreciate it. Appreciate Appreciate y'all because he is dropping some gems for real. So uh, lost. I don't know if I'm saying loss. Is it loss or loss? <laughs> Angelo, Angelo. Just got an email. Loose. Loose. Um, just got an email from uh, GSA giving away free office furniture. I could have resold that, but I'm sure it's illegal. He just I, said it ain't. Listen, with DLA, it's the same. Th so it's not given away. It's it's at a premium. So how how <laughs> surplus material works with with the government, as specifically the stuff that DLA buys, is DLA doesn't buy another gem. DLA doesn't buy based on what they need today or tomorrow. Today's Friday. DLA any of the contracts that they're awarding, it's not for what they're going to do on Monday. The contract that they're awarding is for stuff three months, six months, nine months, 12 months in advance. Think about when we, when Russia invaded Ukraine and then we had American soldiers that were a part of NATO getting deployed in Germany and stuff. If DLA would have been purchasing those boots by the time Russia had invaded Ukraine, Putin would have been like, all right, screw it. I'm, 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 I'm doing what I got to do because you guys haven't even mobilized yet. So they buy way in advance. In advance so because yeah. they buy way in advance, they buy based on a forecast. So they could be like, okay, we need 10,000 boots, but we actually only ended up sending 8,000 people there. So if they ended up only sending 8,000 people, then they have 2,000 pairs of boots left. What do they do with those 2,000 boots to try to recoup their cost? They auction it back off to the public. And when I say the public, there's really only like five to eight companies that get invited to these auctions and then they buy it because they've been around for hundreds and hundreds of years, like the World War II days. But these companies list their stuff in different part marketplaces and stuff. And then you can, uh, and how these auctions work, I want to, I want to clarify this is that you can't see what's in the box. So everything's in a crate at the auction and you don't know. And the bidding might start at $2,500 and there might be a hundred thousand dollars worth of stuff in there, or there right. could be Five hundred dollars worth of stuff that you don't know, like but storage wars. Y'all remember that show, Storage Wars? <laughs> That's exactly what it is. It's like literally federal government storage wars for the Department of Defense. That's literally <laughs> what it is. And these companies will go and they'll do it. They'll take that risk because all you need is one to pay off. Even if you fail at fifty, you know, auctions and you spend twenty five hundred dollars on fifty of them, and it's like okay, I'm in the whole seventy five grand. You spend one that's worth a quarter of a million dollars. Boom, you're you're like you're super profitable. Amazing. So these companies will go, they'll do that, and then they'll list that inventory back on the marketplace. And let's say they spent only 10 grand, right? For something that's really worth 50 grand. For them, they're just like, okay, I'll double the price of it. I hundred percent I I hundred percent margin, like I 2x my money. So us, we get our quote and they're like, okay, this is 20 grand. You have to pay 20 grand to buy it from us. But the DLA brand new, they're paying 50K for that material. So I'll pay 20 grand and I'll sell it to DLA at 40 grand. DLA, everybody's happy. Right. DLA is like everybody's it's happy. 10K under budget. The people at the auction double their money and then I double my money. So that's kind of how surplus works with DLA. No, that's fantastic. Thank you for breaking that down because that's the way I need to understand it, you know? So Asher always been a supporter in my life just in general. So thank you so much for the super sticker and she an entrepreneur helped coach me in business and ACP. I remember that. I remember that. Thank you so much for your support. Love y'all. Swear I love y'all. All right. We got another question from Shannon. Um, hi. Hi, who does the the courier deliver delivery of the parts? Am I reading that right? Hi, Miss Shannon. I'm gonna ask you why you didn't ask. Or first thing I want to say is why didn't you ask me this when you saw me in person? Because we've oh. met we've met before. Oh. I was speaking at Eric Coffee's conference, and you you saw me, and you didn't like. And we talk on LinkedIn, so I don't I don't know why you didn't ask me this this question before. Who Call does the out. courier delivery of parts? So. If there's everything is mirrored with a government, right? So you have to consider that somebody has to ship the parts to you and then the parts have to get shipped from you to DLA. So it, that's something that you're going to have to work out with your vendor um, in terms of who's going to ship the parts to you or who's going to pay for the shipping when the parts come to you. Sometimes vendors are nice and they're just like, oh yeah, we'll take care of the shipping. Don't worry about it. And they factor that into the price. Sometimes you have to pay for that. Now, in terms of who's the courier delivery of parts for DLA, this is where FOB origin versus FOB destination comes into play. And you can find FOB? that on the, FOB origin or destination. So I'm going to explain FOB? it. 
FOB, so prior to me only doing business, I used to be a minor in accounting in college. And oh, wow. FOB originates way, way back in the day, like Christopher Columbus days, when they would send <laughs> spices like between the continents over the ocean. Okay. And insurance companies would use the term freight on board to determine where the material is going to be insured or really who's going to be, at what point does the responsibility of the material change? So some insurance companies would be like the FO, it's FOB and it's like destination or really once it gets to like, let's say America, right? So we're going to insure it once it gets to the 13 colonies or some insurance companies would be like, okay, we're going to insure it, you know, here when it leaves the port, which would essentially be the origin for, for DLA. And they would be like, okay, we're going to insure it during the duration of, of the trip until it makes it to, to America. So in, in reference to DLA, what that means is when it's FOB origin, that means that the government is taking responsibility of the material, meaning they're going to pay for the shipping from the origin. So that means the responsibility is changing at the origin at your facility. And that means that it's going to um, be taken care of by the government. So when you go into the vendor shipment module, they're going to print out a FedEx label um, or a UPS label and you slap it on the box and then FedEx is going to come pick it up. Now, if it's FOB destination, that means that the ownership of the material changes once it gets to the government. So you are paying for the shipping. That's, that's the difference between the two. So you can see that very visibly on section A of the solicitation. It'll, there's a box and it'll be FOB destination or other. If it's other then it's FOB origin. So if you see FOB origin, that means you don't have to pay for the shipping. If you see FOB destination, then you do have to pay for the shipping. I tell new startups, just do FOB origin stuff because sometimes something might be hazmat or it might need to be transported a certain way. And that cost is going to eat into your margin. That was a mistake that I made. Woo! So I'm sure a lot of y'all have to re rewind that because that was a lot if you've never heard it before. But that breakdown is spectacular. And it seems like a lot of people, thank you, NJ Mommy. Um, a lot of people understood because we have um, already saying that that's what that means. And then uh, also adding this to it, FOB origin, government pays for shipping. So um, there was another question or another comment. The DLA purchase purchases off forecast. Correct. Okay, so let me say something about forecast real quick. I got an attitude with forecast. I don't know how good DLA does with forecast, but a lot of other agencies will, even if you contact them and you build a relationship with them, they'll say, oh, we use a forecast. For one, a lot of the forecasts in other agencies are not either not updated um, or they might be once a year, uh, once ha twice a year or once a quarter. And then in addition to that, what happened to us a few times, we went through the whole forecast list with, all, with everything in our NAICS code and our location. And we reach out to that particular contracting officer and that person has moved to a whole new agency. Yeah. And so that project could very well just go bye bye. I mean, especially if it's something new or, you know, they might say, you know, we're just going to scrap this whole project. So you'll probably hear lots of times agencies saying, oh, go look at the forecast. I'll be like, is it up to date? Because I don't have time to play with y'all. That's a lot of information to look at. It could be thousands of projects and you narrow it down, spending dozens of hours and it's not even up to date. So um, does DLA, are they on point? Because <laughs> I'm going to be 100% honest with you. I don't use them. I know where to get them. I tell people, I tell my clients where to get them, but I don't like to rely on them just because in my experience, it's just been, it has... I don't want to say it hasn't been accurate. Maybe I just like didn't know how to read them or, or something, but I spent like three months of my life only bidding on stuff that was forecasted to, to be purchased at the time when I submitted the bid and I didn't get any results. And I was like, I'm going to go back to being a cowboy and just do things the, the way that I know how to do them. Uh, right. So, I mean, I tell, I have a, a document. Um, that literally gives like all the websites on where to get them um, in in the course, like in the informational documents that you guys get when you sign up. Um, but just being 100 percent honest, I don't I don't use them. Um, I'm kind of just like a I'm a pick up the phone kind of guy and just be like, hey, listen, how much do you of this do you need? And then oftentimes they'll tell you they'll be like, okay, we're gonna buy this, and then in a couple of weeks we're gonna need to buy some more. Like the contracting officers know more about their projects that they have or or it it'll typically be like the crew chief that's overseeing the platform and platform just means like 
you know, the, the aircraft or the submarine or the vehicle or whatever the case may be, those guys will know more about the forecast um, just over a phone call than you would get if you're talking to like some random person at the DLA help desk that's like, oh, here's the forecast. And like, it's not even updated. So that's just how I go about it. And I'll say with services, it's usually like the facility manager. So if you're reaching out to a contracting officer, they're usually in charge of a, a whole bunch of stuff. It could be yeah. in different states. Yeah. Um, but then the user, the end user is going to be, like you said, the crew chief, the facility manager, the, the manager. It could be anyone in a section or department. They're the ones that has the need. And they would go, they go to the contracting officer and say, look, I need all of this stuff. And then the contracting officer is the one that has the money and says, okay, well, we can't do all that, but we're going to do da, 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 da. So when you're reaching out to contracting officers specifically, they don't really know. A lot of times they don't really know exactly. They don't know anything about the project. A lot of times um, they may know a little, but even more so than that, the facility manager, or whomever also may not know because it could be something totally random. Let's say it's mold. Yeah. I'm a facility manager. I don't know a damn thing about mold, but I know it needs to be, you know, removed. removed. <laughs> and so you can't just accept, you can't just expect them to just say, okay, this is exactly what you need. And that's why I tell y'all to go into an industry that you're familiar with. Like products is products, right? Like it doesn't take a whole lot of brain juice to figure out how to sell paper towel. But I'm saying when it comes to other things where you don't know the gaps, you all need to know what you're doing because the contracting officer, facility manager, whoever may not know the gaps. I actually was a sub of a sub on a contract. And they told me, and this is, I don't want to give away what it, what the situation was. They told me to throw away personal documents into the dumpster. I'm like, I was in IT for 20 years and you are also in the federal government and you're telling me to do what? No, we're not doing that. Y'all can do it, but Foresight Industries will not be doing that. And they redid the whole uh, performance work statement. So with those types of things, you got to, you got to be the expert. I know that that's not the right thing to do. So that's how you got to go into all these like, OK, I always tell my students, look for the errors in the solicitation. That's yep. how you'll know what questions to ask, because yep. you just yep. that's the end all be all. Look for errors. That's how you can get your questions out and you'll know, OK, well, let me see if they even knew. <laughs> I want to I want to piggyback off that when Please you say do. look for errors in the solicitations. So very similar to how you said, like some people don't even essentially know like what's going on with the solicitation just because they're managing so much stuff or managing stuff in other states. I see it happen so many times where DLA issues solicitations and they're like, okay, go get the material from this person as the approved source. The approved source's cage code is inactive and they haven't done anything like with the government since like 2021. And then you can go, when you can call the contracting officer up and be like, listen, I know this product market and I know exactly who you guys are talking about in reference to this. They no longer do business. I can get you a cheaper alternative from this company. That's how you get in their good graces. But yes, looking for errors, looking for things that are wrong, or sometimes they might have, um, like if, for instance, the gentleman who asked about av fuel, they might have a certain hazmat requirement and you can look at it. And if you under, if you're DG good certified and you know about hazmat requirements, you can be like, listen, in the contract, it says this, but to transport jet fuel, if you want me to do it that way, we are going to be in some serious trouble. So we really need to do it this way. So when you can come to them with the errors in their own work, they're not going to feel slighted or, or disrespected. They're going to be grateful. They're going to be like, thank you for catching that. What, what do I need to assist you with properly fulfilling this? Listen, that is like a mouthful. And I don't think you guys are really feeling him on that because it happens probably more often than not, especially with services. I mean, anything is even uh, access to a building. They're like, oh, we didn't even think about you having a key. Hello. Like those types of things are super important and they do want you to make it as easy as possible. Think about if someone... So, of course, I'm always going to reference services, but you can do the same thing with your Amazon delivery, right? So think about you getting the service. If the plumber says, you know what, it'll be really good if you use this type of sealant to put this toilet in rather than this. You're not going to be like, uh-uh, don't tell me how yeah. to put the toilet in. You don't know nothing about no, uh, putting the toilet in. You're going to be grateful that they offered you something that makes sense. So this is the same thing with them. Don't be afraid. They're not the boogeyman. Like, what'd you say? The DCMA. DCMA. The contracting offices are like, I'm overworked, probably underpaid, help. And you're you're providing that help. That's what the point of this, making it easy for them as possible. Now, don't get run over because sometimes these contracting offices are a little funny. But yeah. 
make it make it easy to where it makes sense for you as well. Okay. I Thank always you. say in DLA, the amount of money that you're going to make is directly proportional to the amount of problems that you can solve <laughs> and the size of the problem that you can solve for these contracting officers. If you can solve a problem, be like, listen, you guys are allocating $230,000. That's what it looks like in the procurement history. And you guys have been purchasing it from companies that aren't even certified to sell it to you. You can come in. That's how you, that's how you undercut the market. That was how I got started selling bearings. DLA was like, yo, we need these bearings. I was like, this company doesn't even exist anymore. They got bought out by another company. I can give it to you. It's going to cost more, but it's going to be properly packaged and lubricated. And he's like, oh my God, thank you so much. This is going on an F-22. I, I would have never known like the F-22 would have been on the ground. And I was like, I'm your guy for bearings. And then that was, that was kind of how that, how that started. So a lot of times you should be more knowledgeable than the contracting officer about whatever good or service you're providing. And that's how you really, you know, get that's how you really get your foot in the door. That's a thousand percent. You need to be the expert in your field, period. Now, again, you can, can we sell books? Yeah, we can sell books. Books are books, right? The only problem I say, if you're going into an industry, especially when it comes to products, right? Cause say you do services, you're going into products, um, whether it's DLA or not DLA, the thing that if you're like, okay, why does this seem like it's so easy? Just think about the logistics part. So yeah. anytime you're thinking about this seems easy, Think about how the logistics work because anything that's too good to be true in government contracting more than likely is if it's too <laughs> good to be true, you should like ask yourself a couple of questions. And then two, I always say the real work with doing business with DLA doesn't start on the bidding. It's on the back end when you have to compile the paperwork and you have to package and receive and inspect and ship. And then you have to make sure that it successfully got to their place. And then it's a whole other, you got to go into, uh, Pi, which is the procurement integrated electronic enterprise. And then you got to go into yeah. WAF, which is wide area workflow. So that way you can invoice the government and then you got to submit proof that you inspected and receive the materials so you can get paid. So the real work really begins on the back end. So it might seem nice, you know, you, you hit the jackpot where you find something on Best Buy and it's like, okay, it's $20. The government wants to pay 80 bucks for it. I'm making 60 bucks on a hundred of these. I just made my six grand. Just be mindful that you are going to have to package it and ship it and take pictures and document the entire paper trail. And you could be subject to inspection. DCMA can come hang out with you for a week. So just be <laughs> mindful of that stuff. Yeah. What if it rains? Like Brent Archie talked about delivering truckloads of paper. What if it's raining? What's your, what is your fix? Internet, what's your fix? What if it's raining and it's paper? It's not like you can, it's going to dry up and be the same. If it's, if it's electronics, like all those things you all have to think about. So just try to go into living in, living in Florida. Oh yeah. Our warehouse rain. gets so hot in the summer. Oh yeah. Like I can't, I can't keep, I can't keep all the bearings that I would normally keep there in the winter and the spring and the fall. It gets so hot. The lubrication, you literally take the bearing out of the pack and it's just like dripping down the side of it. And then it's like, you have to be certified to relubricate those bearings. And if you don't know that, then you're wow. SOL paying somebody to do it for you. And that's an expensive service because nobody wants to learn how to do it. So the <laughs> amount of people that do it are small so they can charge an exorbitant price. I definitely can, can see that. Okay. So luxury car store, um, do uh, they, do you know how to get started with kits? All right. So I, this is not something that I predominantly specialize in. I've been approached to do it and we've put together a couple kits at Two Lions Aerospace. Pretty much. Um, what's kits? Main... Before you go into it, what's kits? So kits, they can be, they can, kits can really be a anything. It could be any group, any grouping of like products. So like oh, during okay. Ramadan. Like kit. Yeah, like an actual kit, like an actual got kit. It. So like during Ramadan, um, you've got, I know there's contracts to supply like, Quran's and then the prayer mats and then like incense and prayer beads and all like sometimes, um, or I said around Ramadan, but it was literally just an entire religious kit. So there were rosaries and Bibles and Quran's and mats and all that good stuff, literally in a kit. And you put like baggies in there. Um, I've used kits for like repair tool kits. So then you put, they're not used. I've sold kits and it's literally like you're putting in like mini screwdrivers and you're putting in hammers and you're putting in like bags of washers that go inside like a big bag. So a kit could literally be, be anything. Um, I mean, you can search in dibs, um, by nomenclature for the word kits, like, and that mm -hmm. will literally give you all the contracts that have them. Um, and then there's a specific aspect of the government that deals with, with 
issuing the kits um, specifically because it's a different kind of quality assurance because you're not just inspecting one item. You're inspecting how they're being transported. You're inspecting the large bag. You're inspecting all the parts that combine to make the kit. Um, so the first thing that I would do to get started with them is just search by nomenclature and then see what comes up and then um, take a stab at it. But I don't primarily specialize in it just because you're responsible for a lot more moving parts. Like you need, you might need like 25 things that have to go in one bag and that one bag is one unit and you're responsible for 50 units. So it's just like a lot of things to be responsible for a lot of quality assurance that I'm just like, eh, if I don't have to, I, I would like to not. <laughs> Trying to make this as smooth as possible. Okay. So NJ mommy said most manufacturers offer kits on certain items. Okay, cool. Yeah. For some, for some items, some manufacturers do sell them like already kitted up. Or already put already together. <laughs> I like yeah. that. Keep it up. Um, and then Cecile says she, because she's an accountant by trade, right? So she says she got to let these these IRS folk know because they don't even really know all the time. So, okay, that's awesome. And I had a question about, okay, now you're working with manufacturers. Now, is there any type of way to sub this work? Like for you to be a sub or to sub out the work? Like if there, is there a, like a, yeah, a method yeah. protocol so program? We are, so there are mentor protege programs. I, I'm going to be transparent though. I don't know how those work with, with DLA. There is paperwork that you have to submit and that has to go to DLA. And then they have to actually approve it. Now, the way that, so we're a prime, like, and then we sub stuff out. And then we're also a sub for a couple other primes. Like we are not, at, we're not SDVOSB. So we work with an SDVOSB. Um, and we get really good prices on stuff and then they bid it on our behalf and then we're hub zone and woman owned. So they'll give us stuff. And pretty much how those relationships work is you, you, there's no, like, there's no paperwork that you have to submit in terms of like the government, if you will. Right. Like you pretty much come to that agreement with that company and that, that you're not filling out like a, a federal form with DLA or via Sam. Right. It's just, you build a relationship with a company you come to an agreement and then you say, okay, this is what the percentage split is going to be on the revenue. And then usually it's, it's got to work like a puzzle, right? Like you should be proficient in an area they're deficient in and vice versa. So for us, they had access to a whole bunch of manufacturers and they were SDBOSB. For them, they had, um, you know, we had an entire warehouse. We had a big team. We had a lot of experience. We had a lot of growth potential. We had already worked with other companies. Like we were already, we were already like a multi-million dollar company when the agreement was kind of kind of happening. And then also my knowledge of selling surplus at the time. Sometimes they wanted to bid on contracts, but their manufacturers would go out of business. So then they called me and then I'd go track down the surplus. So that you kind of just have to have like a synergy in terms of like the teaming agreements. And then you make those agreements like outside of the realm of the government, if that makes sense. And then typically how it works is they will get their quotes from the manufacturer and then they'll mark it up. And typically the manufacturer will be like, listen, if you want to win this price it at this, cause I know what our competitors are doing. Mm. So then they'll send that to the SDVOSB. The SDVOSB will send it to us, whether if it's a hub zone or a woman owned, we'll bid it. If it's SDVOSB, then I'll send something to them to, to bid it. And that's just a relationship that's just formed on the fact that they've been doing it for a long time. They have manufacturers and then we were already proficient. So that's kind of how priming and subbing works, but we're more so like partners, if you will, because yeah. they'll bid stuff for us. We'll bid stuff for them. But I do want to clarify that we are subs for Lockheed Martin um, and uh, Bath Iron Bath Iron Body Works. They make submarines. So how that works is, yes, it, it's, it's basically DLA issues one big contract that you can't even find on dibs. Like you, you are essentially using a user interface that's specific for like Lockheed Martin or Boeing. And DLA issues, let's say, like for our Lockheed Martin one, I think it's like $400 million. DLA paid Lockheed Martin $400 million, but they were like, hey, 25% of this has to go to small businesses. Yeah. So then we get in the room with these people at Lockheed Martin at these meetings and stuff. And then Lockheed Martin is like, all right, cool. We'll send you a list of parts, just like DLA, a shopping list of parts. This is how many we need. This is when we need the list back by. Um, and then can you go track down the parts for us? So you essentially do the same thing and you're subcontracting and the stuff the money is coming from DLA, but it's not being, you're not going into dibs and looking at that stuff. You're literally interacting directly with the people from Lockheed Martin or Boeing. And then they handle the oversight of all that stuff getting shipped to DLA and stuff. 
That sounds like the best way. Okay, so since they got a okay, that that works with multiple agencies and to include corporate, federal, um, and some local where they they're supposed to um, sub out a lot to minority, veteran, women-owned businesses, right? Mm -hmm. So when you're working with Lockheed Martin and they're like, "Here's the list," are they? Are they like, well, we'll give you, you know, five parts because you just started working with us? Like, how, how do they choose how that's broken down? Or is it just kind of like, it's whatevs? Like, sometimes you might get this, sometimes you get that. Different. Just so it's, so when it comes to these big contracts, the way that they're split up is it's like, it's typically by platform. And what I mean by platform is like, for instance, my I don't I don't handle the Lockheed Martin stuff. My childhood friend does. We actually grew up like across the street from each other. We known each other oh, since nice. we were five. And then he came. I, we were understaffed one day. My mom was like, "Who do you know that can work for us?" And then I called him. I was like, "Bro, you want a job?" And he was like, "Yeah, <laughs> sure." Doing what? And I was like, "You ever seen War Dogs?" And he's like, "Yeah." And he's like, "Can I sell guns?" And I was like, "Sure." And that was. <laughs> and then he ended up. And then he ended up coming. And he didn't sell guns, but he did sell. He did sell like some cool ass army pants to the Air Force. But okay. He oversees that stuff. And depending on the platform, right? So some platforms have to go to certain companies. So they'll send you a list of like specific things, right? So it might be a specific set of screws. And then there's some stuff, like there's one big, um, there's just one really big aircraft and it's called the C-130 and it's a, basically a carrier. And, oh, I, why am I explaining this to you? Like no, you were in the all military. people know the cadence, right? C-130 rolling down the strip. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know what that, what that means. So for the C-130, it's like, because it's so big and they need so many parts, they just throw it out there and they're like, listen, this is free game, fair and open competition for this platform. You can do, anybody can bid on this. Whereas right. like the Lockheed Martin missile defense systems that go on the fighter jets, they send like a specific list of stuff to my buddy um who works at at two lions aerospace and then he specifically only supports like the the miss the missile defense system so it depends on like the kind of contract i see okay so that's very similar to any other type of uh minority like, um, yeah yeah so that that makes perfect sense um so are you exploring any prime or sub opportunities with anyone who's watching the video um, I mean, uh -oh. Uh -oh. in terms of, in terms of two lines, in terms of two lines aerospace, I mean, we're always looking, we're always, That's we're always criteria. looking what they got to come with day, what they got to come with to impress we're always, you. We're always looking. I, I say, and this might not sound, this might not sound nice, but it's the hey, truth. It, this is you business. have to make, you have to make two lines aerospace life better. You have to make our jobs easier. You have to provide some sort of value. And the only reason why I'm saying this is because oftentimes people are like, Day, can I come work for you? Can I just come work at NAMIAD and just learn how to teach people? I'll, I'll do it for free. And I'm like, you working for free labor doesn't make my life better. My life is going to get, your, your life is going to get better because you're hanging out with me or you're hanging out with Sheena, but our lives don't get better. So you have to, if you can solve some kind of problem that we have, then yeah, shoot me, shoot me a message on LinkedIn, but don't, I swear to God, nobody better email me like, yo, I'm an SDVOSB or I'm a, I'm a whatever set aside. Can I, can I work with you? Don't ever lead with that. Always lead with what you, with what you do, value. not what you are. Lead with value. And if you, if y'all get on this daggone, uh, these comments and talk about picking brain, you're getting blocked. Cause if anyone ever says pick brain ever again, nobody wants their brain picked. Don't just reach out to him and say, can I pick your brain? He gave you like millions of dollars a game on this video. Okay. So don't reach out to him and expect him to give you anything for free. He's giving it to you for free right now. So this is what you get. This is your only free. He he's about to not even be able to be on anybody else's videos because he's gonna when he's monetized, he ain't gonna be on nobody else's videos. <laughs> it's all gonna be through him. So just make sure you're leading with value. I talk about this in every video. Lead with value, just like you said. If I gotta train you and you don't know what you're doing, how is that helping my life? Sorry, sorry, not sorry, because once you guys become wonderful business people and you're making millions of dollars, you're going to have that same sentiment. We're giving back right now, and I'm sure he's giving back many times, talking to people, even though he was like, man, I should be charging for this, but I'm going to go ahead and help. Like, you can't do that every day. How are you going to run your business when you're giving free information all day, every day to the gazillions of people that are reaching out? Okay, I'm off my soapbox. So, <laughs> let me go no, over. Honestly, people, people, need to, people need to hear that. People I want to make my really, neck really need to hear that. Because they always come and they're like, I'll work for you for free. I will work for you for free. And I'm like, 
free labor is almost more of a detriment than me paying somebody. Cause at least if I'm paying somebody, I don't have to train them and I know exactly what I'm going to get out of them with yeah. free labor. You can, you can be like, Oh, okay. I want to do this. And then it's like, well, I have to train you in my CRM system and all the automations and how I invoice and, and reading, you know, how we conduct our transactions and how to create, like it's little things too. Like I one time had somebody work for me for free and I was like, okay, this is what our subject line looks like. And instead of just copying and pasting what I showed them, they typed it out and then they were misspelling the company's name. And I was just like, this, that was like the last time I'll ever have somebody, you know, work for free. It. because it's the little things like that when you're trying to work with somebody where it's like your quality assurance is what's going to set you apart um, from, yes. from your competition, the quality of your work, the quality of what you deliver. And that starts like from your, your grammar, like how you, how you communicate with people. Every single thing that you do has to be at the highest level of quality. Maybe not the most valuable, but your quality has to be there. And people can see that because that's the quickest indicator of effort. How much effort did you put into this? If you didn't double check or double or triple check what you read, it's like, mm, I can't help you. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, Brent Archie, um, he also does supplies. He talked about that, too. Something as simple as good customer service, responding, those things. Some people just are not good at that. And, you know, I th I pride myself as being as responsive, responsive as possible and having good customer service. And a lot of people will ask, well, why isn't everyone doing this? It's like a lot of times people just don't have they don't have that. Like you might be have a trade a or not. It's a skill. It like it's not something that everybody has. It's a skill. Correct. It correct. Thank you, Shannon. Is it Charlton? Thank you so much. You are like the video sponsor because you didn't drop that twenty dollars super sticker, and we appreciate you so 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 much just for the love of the game. Not even asking a question, just for the love of the game. I appreciate y'all so much um and j mommy mutual beneficial relationships always last that's correct and even if it's late i'm glad you mentioned that because even if it's later there's been times where you know it's like okay let's just this thing didn't work out necessarily but then the relationship came back later and i helped them they helped me so you know just don't always expect people to just do stuff for you like you said because you're sdvosb like it doesn't really take that long to get that certification real talk i got it it doesn't take that long to get it. So don't just lead with that thinking that someone's going to be like, oh, as if there's not a gazillion of us. I mean, honestly, there's a whole bunch of us out here. So, you know, if I'm if I'm already a seven, eight figure company and I come today, pretty sure that he's going to be like, oh, OK, cool. I think that that'll be a, a more of a, a benefit than someone that's like, oh, I'm just this and I have no record of anything. That's you know? way, I mean, honestly, that was the main, that was the main difference because we were looking for an SDVO, SDVOSB. We were, we were looking for one and they literally came to us and they're like, listen, we're doing, I, I don't know. I think their numbers, I think their numbers were like, they were making more money than, than us, but not like significantly more. They were probably doing, they came to us and we, at that point we had made eight mil and they were doing like 12 mil. And they were like, listen, if we join forces, we can, our growth will be exponential. And it's like, we were getting approached all the time by SDVOSBs, but it's just like, I don't want to deal with an SDVOSB where I have to coach up. And I'm sure the same thing is with you. If somebody's like, Hey, I want to sub with you. You're like, well, listen, if you don't have any prior experience, I'm essentially going to be doing the work, showing you how to do it. And then you get the past performance. And then I got to split the paycheck with you. So it's just oh. like, it really doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't benefit Sheena to do something like that. There's a, there's a lot of ways to, to, you know, go through this process. So just make sure that you're thinking for both of us. If you're coming to, if you're going today, you're like, okay, how can I offer him a benefit other than just your cert or how can, you know, they help me and make it make sense to where it's not heavy lifting, super heavy lifting on one side over the other. So you're right. always leading with value. Okay. So we are almost at the end and make sure everybody go ahead and hit that. Uh, that like, go ahead and continue to leave the comments. And if you're not subscribed, you need to go ahead and subscribe. And I think that I had um, another question. Oh, you mentioned, so set aside is also the same. It's the same thing as regular contracts, right? Like they have set asides for parts. Oh yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So 
So you've got SDV OSB set asides, regular veteran owned small business that aren't disabled. You've got hub zone set aside. So mm. if you guys don't know about hub zone, historically underutilized business zone, business zones, and you can just type in the hub zone map and look and see if your business falls in one. And then you've got woman owned small businesses as well. Um, yep. Now with hub zone businesses. So I recently spoke at a conference and then somebody who I consider to be a lot more knowledgeable than me called me out on this and corrected me. I'm still, I still, I'm gonna give you guys both sides of the spectrum, and we're we're waiting from a higher up in DLA to confirm it. Ooh. I was told that from DLA, from the horse's mouth, that your bid can be up to 15% higher than the competitions for women-owned uh, SDVSB it's and hub zone. That's what I was told straight uh -huh. from the horse's mouth. I was corrected by my mentor, Guy Timberlake, who he's- Oh, made... I love Guy. Yeah, he's, yeah he's I, spoke, a... I spoke with him at the Parts Base Conference um, last, a, last Friday. Mm -hmm. And I was giving, Guy was giving a presentation and then I came on after him. And then he was like, listen, I love everything that you're saying, but I have to, we have to fact check that one thing. And I was like, all right, we can fact check it. I'm standing on what I believe on though. But Guy believes that it's 10% higher than the competition oh, and okay. only with hub zone. So, there is at, there's some overlap. It is true. So, hub zones can be higher than the than the competition. At least ten percent. I think at least ten percent. I think it's woman owned and SDVOSBs. We're waiting to get that fact check, but um, there definitely are set asides. And the, trust me, those set asides they're not going to be the deciding factor. But I promise you, if it's between you and another company that doesn't have the set aside, all things equal, right? Pricing equal, then your company will get the edge. Granted, all things equal, your price has to be good, your quality has to be good, your Spurs score has to be good as well. That's and you know it's funny because guy corrected me on a LinkedIn post one time, but he did it in private. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he messed forever. With I'm a forever fan because I was like, you could have called me all the way out. And I met him in person. He's a fantastic person. Um, but yeah, so that that is a really good point. A lot of people will spend so much time on the search. Like right now, the woman owned certification is on hold. Yeah. I was just I was just um redoing mine and it's still on hold. So don't let that be the determining factor. There's a lot of people who have uh, had set asides for years and never ever want a contract with that specific set aside. So don't say, oh, I got to get my certifications first before you bid on anything. Just do it simultaneously. Go ahead. I, I want to say something. I'm actually about to make a video next week and it's literally going to be called government contracting set asides the lies that you have been told. Yeah. It is almost depressing to me the amount of people that come to me and they're like, do I need to get on a GSA schedule? Do I need to be uh, certified for a woman owned or SDVOSB to, to bid on these? I'm like, who the hell is telling you guys this? This info? You will lose out on DLA awards 10,000 contracts per day, per day, 3.7 million contracts per year. Every single day that you're waiting to bid because you're waiting on a certification, you're missing out on millions of dollars. So they awarded 50 billion in fiscal year 2023 in new contracts. They were literally paying out 220 billion in, in federal contract dollars over those long-term contracts. They spent 200 and 20 billion dollars and you're just sitting down twiddling your thumbs waiting for the SBA to approve that search. <laughs> if you don't if you don't go make that money. If you don't go make that money, he said. Look, that that is so factual and I talk about it I've done a couple of videos about set aside as well. Um I have not successfully gotten an SDVOSB uh contract. And I've had it since before I was even making money for real. And you're like, a unicorn. You are literally a unicorn. You're a black woman, SDVO, and your SDVOSB, and your yep. small business. There's yeah. literally no, like, people either have SDV, they're, they're black women that are small business and then hub zone or as SDVOSB. My, my mother has hub zone, but she didn't have SDVOSB. You guys are as rare as it gets. And even then we couldn't win those contracts on our own. We had to partner with another company. And then Sheena's telling you she had the SDVOSB and it didn't, it didn't, it wasn't the defining reason for her success. And you, and if you think about the percentage, right, they forget about the total small businesses, which is what 20% of all contracts just for uh, it depends on the agency, but like 20, 25%. 20, 25% of all contracts go to small businesses, period, right? Based on your next code. But then you say, okay, SDVOSB is 3%, 5%, 5%. So 5% of all contracts compared to 20, 25%. So just think about 
that at when you're going into starting this whole process. And then, you know, I talk about local. You don't need none of that. You don't need none of that. So just, you know, when you're really going to talk today and take his course, if you're coming to me to talk about my course, just you have a focus, but then also think about, okay, what makes more sense to me? I know when I started, I wanted to be able to go to someone's office. Like if I needed my money, I wanted to be able to pull up. <laughs> you know, it's different with, with products, but with services, I wanted to be able to knock a boo, 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 boo. Hello, where's my I money? I need this invoice paid. I need, I need this, this invoice, invoice paid. And it worked because I was within an hour of my first contract. And that's exactly what my, my plan was. So make it make sense for you. Don't ask me what industry you should go into. Don't ask Day. He gave you a tip, but make it make sense for you. Don't ask me, should I bid on something out of state? I don't know. Can you get to California in a day? You know what I mean? Like, can you just go to California tomorrow? Do you have the means and the money? That's a you question, not a us question. I'm sorry, I've been on the soapbox all day. So <laughs> no, you're, you're that, no, that's some that's some valid stuff. That is some 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 valid. You got to pick stuff that works that works for you because sometimes people come to me and they're like, "All right, I'm gonna sell bearings just like you," and I'm like, "All right, cool. Talk to me logistically. Like, what do you what what do you got going on?" And they're like, "Oh, I'm working out of my shack," and I'm like, "Is it air conditioned?" And they're like, "No." And this is like a backyard shack. Like they have a home, but I'm like, well, then you can't, you can't keep bearings in there. Cause it doesn't, it doesn't make sense to you. And then I got this one company, they work out of an apartment. They're super successful now, but they're like, I want to sell refrigeration equipment. I'm like, okay, yeah, <laughs> sure. But where are you going to keep it? And then how are you going to get it upstairs? Like you're, you can't have that, that apartment with all due respect, it barely fits one fridge in there. So you telling me you want to have 10 in there? Like you got to, you got to pick stuff that aligns with your capabilities and what you have the means to do there. I'll tell you, there are these little fuses that go for hundreds of dollars a pop. The government spends tens of millions of dollars on these little fuses that are like this. They're, they're like, this is like my little gym key fob and you can fit like 10 mm. fuses just in here. And those things are hundreds of dollars. So um, pick something that yeah, aligns right. with the means that you have to to fulfill, and don't bite off more than you can chew. Leave your ego at the door when you start uh, when you start doing business. Don't bite off more than you guys can chew. I see it happen all the time, all the time. And look, so <laughs> you said your first one was four hundred dollars. So it's like, okay, that's that's nothing to sneeze at. Like you, people will sell dag on tumblers on Etsy, and like, oh, I'm getting you know, I'm getting this money, but. That's that's just the entryway, or it could be a hundred thousand dollars for your first time. So just just go with the process. This is regular business. The government is just your client. Yeah. So just yep. remember that the government is your client. This is still your business. So however you need to get there. And um, Los Angelo asks, where are you from? I am from South Florida. I am as flow grown as as they come. I was born in Hollywood. Um, I was born in Hollywood, Florida. Fun fact: I went to the same preschool as Kodak Black and Lamar Jackson. Um, and yeah, I spent. Y'all besties? No, I'm just joking. I, I wish. I I <laughs> wish. I went to. I was born in Hollywood. I went to school in Pompano, um, and then moved and did all my high school years in in Palm Beach. Also went to college um, at F. Or I went to community college then FAU. Um, Roll Owls. We were in the Final Four <laughs> last year. And then our office, Two Lines Aerospace office, is in Fort Lauderdale. And then um, my apartment where I'm doing my flight training is in Vero Beach, Florida. So I'm literally just up and down the coast. Uh, my, my parents live in Palm Beach. And then I also have uh, a house that I go back and forth from with roommates also in Palm Beach as well. So I am as Florida local as I come. I've been here for 22 years. I've seen every kind of mayor. I've seen every kind of spring break catastrophe that you can Ooh. imagine. I have seen it and lived it all so you don't come to atlanta is what you're saying or the dmv oh. well i love listen i love atlanta i'm trying to get based uh in a, in atlanta um i'm supposed to instruct later this year and i just talked to the guy who's running the program um for propel and i'm like yo listen like i'm trying to go instruct in atlanta i got family up, up, up there they listen i know all about i know all about gwinnett i know all about buckhead oh, i know all about fulton county I've, I've, I spent a lot of time in, in that area as a, as a kid. And I was just there. I was there. I was literally there last week um, signing oh, wow. my contract with Delta. I was in Atlanta. So, yeah, I, I love that city um, a lot. I'm hoping. I think if I move there, it'd be good. There's a lot of entrepreneurs there, a lot of black entrepreneurs. So I think if I was in Atlanta, it would be really cool. Um, in terms of the DMV, I've been there also, been to Maryland. One of my close, close friends, his good his girlfriend lives in Maryland, and she invited us um, to stay with with her and, and her family. So, yeah, I've been to Maryland as, as well. Pretty much everywhere on the East Coast, I've 
pretty much hit every single state, so I'm familiar. You didn't go to Massachusetts. That's where I'm from. You didn't go to Massachusetts. I actually did a. I spoke at a speech and debate tournament uh, at Harvard. So oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, <laughs> so that's where I'm from. I haven't been there in years, but that's amazing. <laughs> so what's what's next for you? Because we are over two hours, but I love. This is a great conversation. I don't mind staying on long as long. Yeah, as no, I don't. I don't. Longer. I don't mind. What is next for for what's me? What's next for you? What's next for your company? What's next for your uh for your family company? What's what's next? 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 Because you got so many more years in you. You know, us old heads, we'd be like, okay, look, we got to get to this retirement. You're basically starting your adulthood respectfully. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No, that's, so that well. is entirely true. I mean, for me yeah. personally, um, this year, I'll, I'll, I'm going to be a, in like four months or three months, actually, I'll be become a certified flight instructor. So I'll teach. Mm -hmm. It'll be nice to get paid to fly instead of paying copious <laughs> amounts of money. Um, I took a very large loan to make this flight training happen. Um, and then I'll get to, I'll get to the airlines next year. And then in a couple wow. of years I'll fly with my dad. And fun fact, we're going to be the first black father and son to fly for a legacy passenger airliner in U S history. As far as I know, we're the closest and we're going to be the first to do it in the history of America. Never been done before for a legacy passenger airliner. So that's, that's my goal right now. Um, Beautiful. in terms of two lines, aerospace, there's some stuff that I wish I could share, but I had to sign an NDA, but um, looking at some manufacturers and stuff like that, going to take on manufacturing, going to start making some stuff. Um, wow. That's and, huge. Yeah. I mean, the margins on manufacturing is just, it's, it's more paperwork, more red tape, but it's just like, you won't deal with anything less than 40% in terms of your margins. So, um, that's, that's on the horizon. And I mean, that's, that's public information. I mean, we've, we've talked about that at conferences, um, in terms of NAMIAD, Trying to grow, trying to go our, our YouTube. I really want to grow the content that that we're doing there. Um, and then, you know, the next boot camp. Um, I like hosting the boot camps. I like teaching group settings. Last time we had 32 companies join us. Nice. Um, so in I'm person, hoping... is it virtual per in person? No, it's it's, it's virtual. Mm -hmm. So the next boot camp I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do is gonna be virtual, but God willing, fingers crossed, I get based in Atlanta. I'm planning on doing an in-person one at the end of this year. Oh, nice. Um, so yeah, boot camps coming up. Um, I later on in a couple in two months, I'm going to Thailand to go do Ooh. another podcast. Wait, um, wait, 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 wait. Before you even go on, listen, I I was thinking about just like I get my hundred percent VA disability. I was like, I'm I literally said to my friend today, I'm moving to Thailand because for two grand, I can have a driver, a nice apartment, a chef. I was like, look, so when you go to Thailand. Help a sister out. Let me know how much it costs. I will. I will. I will definitely. I will definitely let <laughs> let you know. I'm gonna. I'm gonna keep my little spreadsheet and track how much I'm. I'm spending. But um, I'm headed out there to do another podcast. Um, I'm trying to get on. I, right now, we're kind of just doing like a big marketing push, trying to get the name mm -hmm. out there because we spent a long time. We spent the last essentially two years only just building companies up, and we weren't. We really weren't doing any marketing. Everything was all word of mouth. Um, so now we're trying to do the big marketing push, um, trying to get on, I mean, trying to get on with, with Kizzy, trying to get on with Jason, trying to get on the earn your leisure podcast, oh, yeah, um, your kind leisure. of just doing, kind of just doing the marketing push and then growing the YouTube, um, really want to, want to push that. And then outside of that, I'm going to go take some trainings myself, uh, with DLA and I'm going to take guys class. So that way, um, every single boot camp, I update the information. Like I always make sure that I'm giving you guys at least at least like my threshold is if, if the new information I give you guys can't make you another 10 K a month, then I'm not ready to teach the boot camp. So that's kind of why they're so spread out. I like to make sure every single one is, is, uh, more informative than the last. So that's, that's kind of what, uh, what I've got on the, on the horizon. So, um, hopefully that's somebody cool. here is, I think we might've already hit company 100, but I got to check. Hopefully somebody hey, on here is company 100. Cause you guys are going to get something very, very special. Look, and if you do, go ahead and tag, because we're following each other on Instagram. So just um, tag me, and then I can repost it for you. Um, but, you know, that's that's really important for people to know that your, your teacher needs to also be a student. Because I am, for those who don't know me, I'm a, I'm a program junkie. I am a conference junkie. I want to know the latest and greatest of whatever, business stuff. I teach about business 
first. I don't care if you never bid on a contract as long as you are running this business properly and not doing anything crazy. Because what happens when y'all do stuff crazy in the government space? You mess it up for us, just like in War Dogs. When they mess it up, it changed the whole landscape of government contract. Don't come in here messing up our government contract. <laughs> I'll tell you, if those dudes never freaking got caught, we would be, <laughs> we would all be driving Porsches. We would have fat chains. We probably wouldn't even be doing YouTube. We would probably be no. so rich. These people wouldn't even know that we existed. If those, if those MFers never got caught, <laughs> and I'll, I'll tell you, I, li I literally was in the pet house that they filmed that, that movie in. We would have all been able to buy one of those things cash if those guys never got caught. They changed the game for. They changed for, the game. Please, no more mistakes like that. Don't that don't make it any harder than it is. Right, and you know that's. And we're joking and laughing, but that's really serious. That's exactly what happens. When someone messes it up, they mess it up for everybody. And I like it here, okay? Yeah, and I don't like, want to. I don't want to leave. I don't want to leave, right? And so there's people that come to me, and I'm sure they come to you as well, Day, where they're like, "I want my first contract," and it was like within two days. Not we're not talking about DLA because that's apparently a faster way, but we're talking about. You just subbed it out somewhere in the country where you're not located, and then they find out they underbid severely, and that's why you won the contract. So now what's going to happen is all these people are going to be underbidding because they don't know what they're doing respectfully because they, maybe they didn't take the right course or whatever the case may be. And then you're messing it up for us. So then they're going to put all these parameters in place when it comes to bidding, like you got to show this and this and this, whereas... You could just bid on a contract usually out the gate and win. Now they're like, well, you have to be a year in business before you can ever bid on any contract. So please make sure that you're you're doing your due diligence with your, you know, with your instructor, whoever's teaching you, and that what they're teaching you makes sense to you. If you live in Maine and you've never ever done anything business, like you straight, whatever, you worked at a warehouse your whole life, you corporate America. And no one's ever even, you don't even know how to spell business. And then you're building on like a, a fuel contract in Alaska. Okay. Like, does that make sense to you? Really think about it. I don't care if somebody said you need to just bid on whatever and see what sticks. Mm -mm. Stop doing that because y'all messing it up for us. <laughs> the OGs in this space. Okay. Go ahead. I, I, I a hundred percent agree with you. And I'll tell you, it happens all the time in DLA. Yeah. The only difference is. When you first start out in DLA, they do these things called requests for traceabilities, or we call them revals, which is short for request for evaluation, like they're evaluating your bid. And a reval, when you get that, that means your company is within one of three companies to be awarded for the contract or three finalists. Sometimes you're the only company, but it means up to three. And the government will ask it. And thankfully, now they have that safeguard in place, but they used to just be throwing these awards out left, right, and center to these companies. And I probably would say every month we work with about five companies, like on a personal consulting basis, every month out, out of those five companies, one of those companies gets a reval. Like, oh, I'm about to win my first contract. And then I look at it and I'm like, you are in the hole, like $15,000 on this because cool. you miss, one of the big things is the unit of issue. People will see a hundred and then stuff will come in packs, right? And they'll just, a pack will be a hundred but DLA wants a hundred packs of a hundred. So they really want 10,000. So they'll bid it. Like they'll pay, they'll bid the price of the whole 10,000. Like it's one and they, they get burned. And I'm just like, dude, you're in the whole 15 grand. So yeah. Cause you're that, just trying to happens. jump up. Trying to jump off the porch. I want you to jump off the porch, but I want you to jump up, jump off the porch responsibly. Which technically, those two things don't go together, but but they do. Look, <laughs> like a jumbo shrimp. Yes. Look, make sure it makes sense, and that's why you need to go into something that you're interested in. And I just want to highlight um, Cecile real quick because I've been giving this example all week. So I do. Un my students pretty much have unlimited access to me, and like just like with day, you should be able to just go. After a while, you don't need me no more. You know what I mean? So Cecile did a really, really good call with me the other day where she's an accountant by trade, right? So she looked, she found an accountant contract. Perfect, right? Oh, nice. But then she speaks like 511 languages. So she's like, you know what? I found another contract for translation services in my state. This makes sense to me. And I'm like, ding, that's what I try to get people to understand. 
I can't tell you specifically what to go after, but does it make sense? And so that was just a really, really good um, example of, yeah, it may not be your exact trade, but you kind of do this. Like if you learn to play the violin and you're like, my company's facilities, but I can play the violin. I'll just do this contract because I can play the violin. Like that's the type of brain I want you guys to have. I, I want to piggyback on that. So I always tell people, listen, the or the people that I always tell the people that want to do business with DLA, what you intend on selling to make the money might not be the thing that you actually make the money on. I had a couple, <laughs> the couple that's now doing 12, 12K a month. They literally were sell previously, they had a construction company and not like building stuff, but selling construction supplies. You know yeah. what they freaking got in making 12K a month doing? Like, you know how they got their start? Literally, they made $24,000. Their first, they won three contracts in one day, three contracts in one day, and they made $24,000 in one day. You know what they sold? You will never guess this. If I tell you, you'd be like, I didn't even, I didn't even know. Let's get some the guesses. Marine, like the whistles that in the water that Marines used to train. And then the next, the next contract was for some flippers and they were a construction company. And they made, they sold $20,000 worth of whistles and they sold $4,000 worth of like the little fins that you use when you go scuba diving. Like the, the joints that you put your foot yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Those. <laughs> See, I can't tell you or they can't tell you, oh, maybe you should go after some flippers. It's like, does this make logical sense to me? You know, and like, can I find it? Can I get a good price for it? So that's the, that's the brain that you need. That's the brain that you need to have. So that's a perfect example. And look, so we had two, two hours and 15 minutes. This is fantastic. I know this replay is going to go crazy. So are I there any that. parting words? Uh, from you, Day, and you guys, while he's giving his parting words, go ahead and ask your last few questions. Drop any questions, comments that you have. Um, Sheena, you're, she's going to have my email on there. She's going to have my LinkedIn on there. She's going to have um, hopefully a link to, to my website. But if not, you can shoot me an email um, yeah. for it. Um, so I hope that you guys reach out to me. I'm telling you guys, number 100, I got something very, very special um, for whoever is the hundredth company that that we work with, but um, fun fact: fifty-one percent of contracts with DLA either are have nobody bid on them or only one person bids on them. So that means over half of the contracts that are out there is literally free game. Like somebody, please award these contracts. I'm Eight and a half I'm thousand right. companies are literally getting three million contracts. There is more than enough to go around. I hope somebody considers it. You can do it out of the comfort of your own home. I'm not going to sit up here and lie to you and tell you that it's easy or that it's a get rich quick scheme. But I mean, if you, if you kind of like the, the autonomy of being able to, um, you know, control the quality of, of what's, what's happening and control, be able to inspect the parts as they come in and you know exactly what it is that you're shipping and when you're going to get paid for it. If you like that, um, then yeah, please, you know, reach out to me. I, I'd be glad to assist you in, in any way that I can. And, um, yeah, I mean, we hope to see some of you guys on, on board, please check out my YouTube channel because if you don't subscribe, uh, or if you don't want to sign up for the course, at least consume the free stuff that I'm, that I'm putting out, out there. I'm trying That's to right. get you guys, I'm trying to get you guys rich. They spent $220 billion. 1% of 220 billion dollars is $2 billion. 1% <laughs> of $2 billion is $20 million. That's a 10th of a percent. If you get a 10th of a percent, you're making $20 million a year. If you get a hundredth of a percent, you're getting $2 million a year. One hundredth of a percent of the money that DLA is spending. Like we need to think, uh, especially, you know, uh, there's, I'm sure there's all kinds of, of viewers out here, but you know, minority business owners or people that, that, you know, maybe, maybe you're white, maybe you grew up in a trailer park or, or something like that and your life was tough. We cannot be thinking in thousands of dollars. We can't even think in hundreds of thousands. We can't even, you can't even think in millions because if you think in millions, then your ceiling is going to be millions. You got to think in billions. So that way, if billions is your ceiling and you're only getting a piece of that pie, at least if you're getting 1% of a billion, you're getting a couple mil. So we have got to, we've got to raise our, our thinking. It look, look at everything from a macro perspective. Think about how much money there is out there. Also, a fun fact, I learned this from reading... This book, Grant Cardone's book, Seller Be Sold, there is enough money in the world in circulation for every single human being on planet Earth to have a net worth of a million dollars. If you just Ooh, take Jeff Bezos' net worth 
and you gave everybody in America a million dollars, he'd still have money left over. That's just one billionaire. Think about Elon Musk. Think about all the Saudi princes. And then think about all the other billionaires in the world that we don't know of. There is so much money in the world to get. Please do not have a scarcity mindset. Please do not think that money is, is finite. Money comes and goes. You can you can make as much money as, as you could ever envision. And to make money, all you got to do is solve problems. And to solve problems, all you got to do is, is think of ideas. And everybody can think of ideas. So those and are these are not even... Words. I'm sorry. Yep. Oh, no, you're good. You're good. You're good. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> and look, this is not even something that you have to invent. This is stuff that's already out here in the free world. So we're not asking you to be uh, Albert Einstein or anyone who's an inventor. You You can do that. But this is stuff that's already in circulation. They just need you to be the conduit. They need you to bring it to them. Bring it to the bring the horse to water, basically. Yep. Yep. So we got a couple of um, any advice for a soldier that's transitioning six months and going into GovCon. Um, start your business right now. That's what I did. Start it now as you're transitioning. That is exactly what I was gonna say. Sheena simplified it way better than I, I was gonna say. <laughs> I was I was gonna be like, listen start doing market research and picking a product and start like doing some, some digging into the kind of companies that you're going to work with. Um, six months of market research can set you up for five years of success. I'm being so serious. You sink your teeth into that and you really start following the money you use FPDS, you use usaspending.gov and you start breaking down the FSC codes. Listen, you can even start asking for quotes. The only thing you can't do is you can't bid on them, but you can literally, it's almost like you're loading a rifle and you can fill up, you can fill up the magazine with rounds of quotes that you're going to fire off once you're ready. So I That's would funny. say take those six months to get prepared. Um, that way you're ready when the time comes and you don't got to get ready. You stay ready. So you don't got to get ready. Always, always. And NJ Mommy, um, you've been so active throughout this whole call. So really, really appreciate you. Oh, this video. I keep saying call. I don't know what I'm talking about. But um, this whole video, thank you both. God bless. And I pray each one of you wins contracts sooner and later. Yes, Lord, because it's been a drought over here in the services world. I'm about to I'm about to jump on DLA tonight. Tonight. Listen, it comes, it ebbs and flows. We have good months flows. and we have bad <laughs> months too. It ebbs and flows. I remember we were so dry and Eric comes. Eric, is, Eric fun fact. Eric literally lives like my house in Palm Beach. Eric's house is like 10 minutes away. And his son wow. is also like five minutes away. So I literally was out at the bar, like with my buddies on a Sunday, mind you, a Sunday at like 2 p.m. before everybody moves away. And look <laughs> who I see dancing with his neighbors. I see ah. Eric talking and he's like, how's business? I'm like, oh man, it's like, it's good, but it's like kind of slow. He's like, shit, not for me, baby. We have, we're doing good over here. On the good on it. <laughs> so it ebbs Eric and flows. It ebbs and flows. There's ebbs and flows. It depending on where you are, it all that stuff, you know, is determined. So got a really, really wonderful comment. So I just want to shout out my super, super chatters and super stickers again. So luxury car store, thank you so much. You actually sent two of them things, two of them things. And L Devin, thank you so, so much. And Jay, mommy, thank you so so much. Um, Kai, thank you so so much. Always uh, a supporter as well. Asher, we appreciate you. And Shannon, the sponsor of this video, we really 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 appreciate y'all. So um, we almost at two and a half hours, and I'm still energized because I'm about to get on DLA tonight. But thank everyone for staying on. Make sure that you hit like. Make sure you share. And it's not too late. Like, say the transaction didn't go through. You can still do the super chat later. It can come through at any point. Um, and you stay on. Um, day, stay on after we disconnect. So until next time, y'all, it's your favorite veteran. Peace out. <laughs>